Hello, fellow humans. <laughs> Stolen that one. Uh, welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Hello. Oh, Jesus. I, I forgot I had my sound on. Um, yeah, welcome. Hi, Andy. I think just me and you. Uh, <laughs> you're my most loyal <laughs> viewer. Uh, right, so, last time I tried this plane, didn't get very far with it because I wasn't familiar with it. I was just testing it out. It was brand new. It came with the last update. Since then, I've done a little bit of homework. I've been watching the great uh, series of tutorials that uh, 737NG pilot, I want to get his name right, has been doing on this plane. And I want to give credit to him uh, for doing this series of uh, videos. 737NG space driver. I don't know why he's a pilot, but 737NG driver. Yes, he has done a series of videos, very clear, very concise, step by step, on how to fly this plane from start up all the way to pushback, to taxi, uh, climb, cruise, descent, final approach, taxi, and switch off. Uh, now, it's not a case that I've watched all eight of those videos and memorized everything. Uh, I made notes in um, Microsoft Word. Yes, it is a legitimate copy of Office. <laughs> I, made, I, I made notes. So I have eight documents for each one of the episodes and I have made notes. And I'm familiar with a, a bit of it, at least at the beginning. It's mainly the descent and stuff. So I can't guarantee this flight's going to work out at all. But I'm going to give it my best. I'm going to try. And in case anybody is wondering, yes, you can import a Simbri flight plan into this plane. Um, I, I won't be doing it today, I don't think. I want to, I'm going to input the route completely manually because this plane's quite cool the way it does it. So we're going to be doing it that way. And we are going to be flying out of Buffalo, Niagara, which is where we are right now. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the weather is a bit crappy. It's even crappier in Washington, Dulles International Airport. At least when I took a look at it, it was even more wetter and rainier. So that's going to be fun. Calvin, YNWA, welcome to the stream. Nice to see you, my man. Uh, so... My NWA. You'll never walk alone? Mm. Anyway, welcome anyway. So, let's get on board. We are cold and dark. I've got the Simbri flight plan set up. Um, I've been into Navigraph to have a look at a couple of bits of information that I've noted down. Uh, but I'm going to be following step by step uh, the notes I made uh, on 737's video. So what we've done is we've got the ground power connected, the wheel chocks which are already on, I've got the cargo door open, the main door open, and the tail prop. Uh, so the tail prop is this which you should see at the back there, that white thing here, um, which I guess is just in case a lot of people get on. We don't want a tail strike. <laughs> we don't want the tail going backwards. <laughs> so I don't know what the balance on this plane's like. Uh, we're going to be doing a, what they call a power, let me get this right now, I don't know, it's something to do with, oh, power pushback, I think it is, a power pushback, uh, where we're not going to have a pushback service pushing the plane, we're going to actually have the plane do it itself under its own power. This is where I'm going to have to be really gentle on the on the brakes, or not make any ab abrupt movements, uh, because if I hit the brakes too hard, the plane could go up in the air and tip, and we get a tail strike, and we don't want to do that. Um, so yeah. Hi, ah, you're a Liverpool fan. Got gotcha. you. See? See, I knew what it. I knew what it meant. Okay, I googled it. I quickly Googled, Googled it. You know why I Googled it? Because I thought it might be an airport code. 
<laughs> true, true, yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm looking forward to this, especially if I manage it, I'm going to be very pleased. Now, unfortunately, so far, GSX doesn't have an update that incorporates this plane, so we can't bring the stairs over. Um, what am I talking about? It's got its own stairs. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have its own. At least I don't think it's been updated for it yet. I, I've been grabbing updates for it by running the installer, but I don't. It, they don't tell you anything. There's never any change logs or anything like that, so you don't really know. And yeah, it's got its own stairs. But if I started boarding people, it, what I don't want it to do is bring the jetway because you you can't you can't use the jetway on this plane. I mean, you just can't. So it'll be interesting. Maybe we should give it a shot and see what happens. Uh, right, my iPad's battery's going, so I better get some uh, proper power onto this plane. Uh, the flight time is around one and a half hours. So, anyway, um, so we have ground power, we've got main door and tail prop. So, we are going to be doing some provisional checks as well, as per the notes. Um, so, some of these are going to be things that you don't need to do, because you know they're already going to be set, like checking that the gear's down. Well, obviously, it's going to be in the sim, uh, but these are checks that a real pilot would do anyway. Um, so we'll carry out a couple of those. So we're going to make sure that the throttles are in the idle position, and they are. Um, and conditional levers are shut off, which they are, and the flaps are at zero, which they are. Okay, cool. So now we're going to go to battery on. And we're going to wait for the avionics to power. And I don't mean the big T, I mean the actual avionics themselves. This is going to flash a few times, it doesn't really mean anything at this point. Yeah, interesting plane. Uh, watching the videos, interesting plane. I, I would like to certainly learn it and become proficient with it. Um, and when I... The things when I... When I tried this plane out the first time and I was thinking... You know, how do I set the runway elevation? How do I set decision altitude? And how do I change the the, the range of the of of the of the map? You know, the the navigation map and stuff. And I thought, how is it? Where do you do this? And then, obviously, watching the video, I was shown how it was done. And yeah, now I know. <laughs> okay, cool. So everything is good. Everything is flashing as it should be. Um, what I like on this plane as well is it's got the onboard uh, checklists which you can actually run through um, and as you're running through the checklist it will put up the correct screen on the display uh, so if you're going through a checklist and suddenly one of the checks is to do with hydraulics it'll put the hydraulic screen up if one is to do with electronics it'll, or the engines it'll put the engines screen up right it, it, it's cool. I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, so, yeah, it should be fun. Uh, Calvin says, I'm also in the middle of learning this aircraft and enjoying flying it. Oh, very cool. Well, maybe I'll do something that will teach you a little tip. I don't know. It could happen. <laughs> I, I watch videos of stuff that I know about already, like, you know, setting the Boeing... 737 up from cold and dark for example and I watch somebody else do it and they'll do something that I'll learn from there's always something to learn even though you think you know it there's always something to learn and I like that so hopefully maybe we'll get something like that today uh, uh, Antonio Pierre Galante is it Galante or Galant uh, welcome Antonio hello um, <laughs> you two talking about football. <laughs> right. Avionics are now powered up. So, let's switch on the uh, external power, the main external power, which is somewhere here. Yeah, I, I my thing was covering it, but okay, fine. 
Uh, now, the, the dome light, in case you're wondering, is down here, so I might just put it on bright for now. Uh, right, so switch on, whoops, switch on main external power. And now we have to turn off all the white lights, which is everything that says off, apart from fuel pumps and probe heats. Okay, so the fuel pumps are these two here, and the probe heats are these three here, and I'm guessing the windshield heating has to go on as well. So apart from these three and these two, we're going to turn on every other light that's off. So, DC gens, uh, leave those. Uh, I'll put the windshield heating on because it is raining outside and it's going to be cold, so why not? Um, so the air conditioning generator is going to go on, um, hydraulic power on, uh, oxygen on, yep, we're going to need that. We'll test that as well in a minute. And that's, that's that. So we've only got five off lights. Cool. That's that done. Right, overhead panel, uh, which is what we're in now. Now that we've got that done, now we're going to use the same sequence as I do in the Airbus and as I do in the Boeing, which is, the, you can see that this is divided up into four columns. So I'm going to go from the bottom up, bottom up, bottom up, and bottom up. Okay. Oh, bottoms up. So this is a test we're going to do now. So we're going to turn on the first field pump, make sure the low pressure go light goes out. It does. We'll turn on the cross feed and make sure the right hand side goes out. And it does. We'll turn that off. Turn that off, and now we'll turn on the right-hand engine fuel pump, make sure the fuel pressure goes off, and it does. We have pressure. Okay, this is one of the things that you don't need to do. It's just for procedural sake. Um, okay, so now we can do an SW test, which I don't know what SW is. Micro switch. Ah, oh, switch test. Okay, that's the door micro switch test. That's fine. Uh, landing gear lights all showing green. Yes, they are. TLU is guarded. It is indeed. All MFCs are on. They are. And now we'll do the engine test. So we have the squib test, which shows squib. And then we switch the switch down for the fault test. I'm going to be doing all of this by the book, and then I'm going to crash the plane. You see. <laughs> but hey we make the best of it right okay cool that's everything on row one done now row two we're going to turn off the beacon light which is for some reason on i don't know why um so all we've got on is the nav light fine i don't know they, I, they need to fix this if it's a cold and dark plane the beacon light shouldn't be on, so I hope they sort that out in an update. Uh, it's a bit weird that it's there. Um, okay, so now we're going to, going to enable the propeller brake because we don't want the propeller to spin when we turn the engine on. What the hell? How did that happen? It stopped raining. Damn, it always does that. Okay, so we're going to... I think we have to hit the auxiliary um, hydraulic pump. So we'll do that. And then what we'll do is we'll go back up here. And we've got the propeller brake here, which is in the off position. So we'll unguard it, switch it on, and guard it. So now when we start the right-hand engine so that it can act like an APU generator, the propeller won't spin. That's all it does. Just puts, puts it literally puts brakes on the propeller. Okay, that's done. Um, what else? What else do we need to do? Enable prop brake, then the parking brake, and the switch on the prop brake above. Battery select, set emergency switch, and back to manual. Okay, so this is going to make sure that we have um, power there. So let's do that. As you can see, the needle has moved there. It, so we got plenty of power, so let's go. Emergency power, I would say. Um, okay, that's it. Row three. So row three, uh, we're going to arm the emergency lights. And 
we're going to arm the seat belts and no devices. Turn off your iPhones. Uh, right, checking for no issues here on the anti-icing panel. And uh, apart from the fault at the bottom, that's fine because we haven't got engines running and stuff like that. Um, but there's no nothing else here. Everything is switched on, so that's good. Um, apparently this is because there's no air bleed yet, and that's why it's off. Um, there's no need to put external power on the AC Wild uh, because this is for maintenance purposes only, so we're going to leave that alone. Um, and let's just make sure that hydraulic power is all showing low pressure which it is and that is normal at this stage okay number four annunciator lights let's test them this will light up every light on the panel make sure it's all working again this is simply procedural textures no not not procedural textures cabin cabin temperatures it says here <laughs> uh, good. Hang on. Fault lights on the bleed panel is normal. For the four faults here because the uh, because the um, engines aren't running again. Uh, cabin temperatures comfortable is 20 degrees, so we're showing six because well, it's cold outside. Um, we want to leave the switches here for normal. Temperatures, so I'm hoping when we get everything powered up, those temperatures are going to rise. So it is cold in the plane at the moment. I don't know whether turning the heat up with these knobs will do anything at the moment until the plane is at least powered on with an APU or something. I don't know. But I'm going to leave that right now at 6 degrees. Passengers can just put a, keep their coats on. Uh, okay, so... Now we're going to check the oxygen supply to make sure that there is plenty of pressure and there is, it's right at the maximum there so that's cool and then we'll carry out the same fire test for the top. How different this is from the first time I tried this plane. Alright, that is that. So now we're going to come down to the uh, pedestal, centre console as I call it. If I press the right switch, we are. There we go. Okay, so this is the pedestal, or center console, and I've lost my place in the Word document, so there we go. Okay, we're going to carry out uh, ATPSC test. It's here. I don't know what it is. I'm sh I think we have a, a, a button for this uh, to get there. There we go. Number five. So I think we have to lift the guard. And we go to uh, we go to engine, and that's going to show us something on here. It's going to put a load. Now I think that the reason that they're both showing is because I switched it to the right side accidentally. Uh, and yeah, let's turn that. The thing is, the cover keeps closing. All right, so those needles have reset now. So just keep an eye up here. Uh, we're going to go to the left engine first. Oh, it's, okay, it's put a load on both. I don't know why. And the next one is simulating an engine failure. Well, that's that one. And we should get... There you go. Engine 1 flame out at takeoff. And as you can see, there's nothing. Engine 1 is... But that's what an engine fail would be like. And the same for... The other side, if I can find the hotspot. Okay, so this is second engine. I thought it only showed up uh, the engine that you were doing, but it seems like it's oh, it's doing both. But never mind. Uh, and if I do, if I turn this all the way to uh, the, that side, then it's it exhibits uh, uh, an engine failure on engine two. So all systems are working. That's a good thing, actually, because it lets you know that if there is an engine failure, that the system that will detect and warn you is functioning. So that's a good thing. All right. Uh, five, wasn't it? Yeah, five. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so what? All right, so it is normal for both engines to power up on the first on the first button because it was simulating 60% torque on the engines. That's fine. Checking the pitch trims and all the other trims here, but they're going to be fine anyway, so that's just good. And we can we know this is going to work, but we can test it uh, by looking here. We have an up of 0.5 at the moment. And if I was to flick the switch, I think I did set a button on my joystick for this, but I can't be 100% sure. Um, let me see. If, I don't know if I did. Uh, yeah. I don't know. But anyway, if I flick it, Now then, it was closed before. Let's see, but if I flick it up a few times, one, two, three, four, then we can see it's gone to up 0.4 now. So yeah, it's working. But again, it's the sim, and it would be working anyway. So again, procedural. Right, main panel. Just left of centre display. Yeah. Why have I called it main panel? Okay, so we have click ice test button and observe the centre panel. Okay. I don't know why nothing's showing up. Is something supposed to show up here? Because Do the same for APM. I think something's supposed to show up here, but maybe I haven't done something right. I hope so. But I think something's supposed to... I'll, I'll check on that one. I'll check on that one. So, make sure the power, to, power management set to take off, and it is. Cabin pressure panel, which is on the right hand side, uh, yeah. Uh, make sure source select is not illuminated, and it is not. And finally, the GPWS test switch, which I believe is up here. Don't know where that's going to light up, but. Terrain awareness, test, start. Terrain awareness, system, test. Terrain awareness. Test complete. I guess that's that then. Set the speed target to auto. I believe that... I'm not 100%, but I'm 99%, but I think the speed target switch is in managed mode when this marker is purple. So we'll set it to that. I think that's managed mode. Don't quote me on it. Hey, Von Doodle! Looks like a nice plane. It is. Hey, Commander PD. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Nice to see you guys. This is going to be a, a, a slow burn procedure until we take off because I'm running through everything here. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm getting everything right. Uh, okay, what, where are we? Um, oh, I missed something out. Make sure PEC 1, PEC 2 propeller electronic controls are in, which is here. Yeah, they are. Uh, I think this is still normal at the moment, so... Yeah. Okay, set speed target. Test the oxygen on the left-hand side and that the nose wheel steering is guarded. Okay, nose wheel steering... Where's it gone? Oh yeah, there it is. So nose wheel steering is guarded. I think it is in the on position, which means if I twist my joystick, I'll be able to steer uh, or do the, my rudder. Uh, and with it off, uh, you, you would turn off nose wheel steering so that you can't steer the plane if you're getting pushback. Uh, but we're going to leave it on because we're going to get our own pushback. Oxygen test then. Yep, that's all good. Right, that is the end 
of the cockpit preparation. <laughs> so, stage two then, which is the FMS preparation. Oh boy, I'm looking forward to this. Right, into the FMS then. Let's get the yoke out the way, because it's in the way. Alright, so we need to go into the FMS, obviously. And we want to initialize, and then we go to position in it. And we're going to take the GPS coordinates that the plane has gotten. Tick those, and we're going to put them into our position. Right. Now we need to go back, and we want to go to Flight Plan Initialization. And then go to Route. So now, you can, if you have saved the flight plan in Simbrief, you have to save it in the same format as the CRJ. So you save it as the Aerosoft CRJ format, and you put it into the... Hmm, the correct folder, which is... For me, it is App Data, Roaming, Microsoft, or Microsoft Flight Simulator, something like that, and then Work, Packages, and then there is a folder called Microsoft ATR, and it goes in there. If you are having trouble with that, just put a comment in the video, and I will, uh, after the stream, and I will clarify it. So, I'm going to do this manually for the first time. Right, so we are on a Delta connection flight, so we're going to be uh, Dell. Uh, 2627, as always, is my number. And the reason for 2627 is 1926 was the year my father was born, and 1927 was the year my mother was born, and that's why I do it. Okay, from... We're flying out of Buffalo... Niagara. Is that different from the actual other buffalo, the one that's always snowy? I, I think so, right? Okay, well, and we're going to Washington Dulles Airport, which is different from the other Washington. Because I get confused with that stuff. All right. That's it. Now we can execute. Bang. Right. So now... We are going to choose the departure airport, which is KBUF. Uh, and I'm going to show you my route on screen, so you guys can see. I don't know if I can... Uh, I don't know if I can have both on the screen at the same time. That would be interesting. Um, Right, what I could do is copy the route, okay, this is the easiest way, copy the route, go to my live stream, go to uh, my text and paste the route into the text box, I think this should work, and then show that on the screen, oh boy. <laughs> Yeah, um, we're going to have to make that a little bit smaller because it's way too goddamn big. Uh, I want to try and get it so that it fits on. You can't see it yet, but you you will. You will. So buff direct to, uh, to wiki. And then we've got wiki. Oh, that's that's formatted nicely. Let's put that in. All right, let's see if this works. Where can I put it so it doesn't get in the way? Up there? Okay. Right, here you go. Well, this is not this is my route. Um, I'm going to put this in manually. Now then, as you can see, it says KBUF32, so the takeoff runway is 32. Kind of obvious when you think about it. Uh, right, so let's go to next page. 
Oh, it's here. It's here. I didn't see it there. No, it's the wrong way, 32. And... Now, it says direct to buff, but we've got buff 8 here. Is that the same? Why doesn't it say buff 8 on the routing? Right, I'm just going to check, guys, whether buff and buff 8 are two different things because I don't want to use the wrong thing here. So bear with me. And I'll even bring it up on screen just so anybody who wants to know about it can know about it. Okay, I use, I use my... Um, Navigraph in dark mode. It's just I prefer it that way. So this is the we need to go to SIDS Buffalo 8 departure. It is in fact the only one. So yeah, this is this is it Yep Oops, Jesus, what have I just done? <laughs> I need to press this I think There we go uh, Yes, buff. It's good It's the only one there is buff 8 dot buff, so I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. Cool. See, it's made easy. Learning to fly with Rusty, made easy. <laughs> oh, buddy. Right, so now we're going to execute that. I have, I have to fiddle with my uh, OBS screen, my Navigraph screen, my SIM brief, uh, my Word document. It's doing my head in. Uh, right. So, now that we've got the departure airport and the SID, which is standard instrument departure, we're now going to have to enter the waypoints. Now, this is cool, because I like the way the plane does this. kind of does the work for you, in a way. Um, now... Which one am I going to click on here? Because on my route, I have direct to wiki, okay? But this manual... I don't know if I should do it here. Can I? Well, I'll put it in here and we'll see what happens. So, we know Wiki is the next one, W-I-K-K-I, and that's the next airway, okay? So you might think, okay, well, we'll just type in uh, Wiki here, and then enter it here. Eh, eh, no, you don't. Not with, this, not with this plane. With this plane, you leave it blank, and you click on the key. And I've obviously clicked on the wrong one, because Wiki isn't in the list. So, let's go from Buff and try it here. Oh no! Why isn't it there? Help! The next one should be there, guys. What have I done wrong then? No. This is where you change your... I figured this out. This is where you change your altitude and speed constraints. You can program them in yourself, which is great. Oh no! So buff 8, direct to wiki. What if I click next waypoint? Not gonna work for me. All the all the possible airways and waypoints should be listed here. And then you pick the right one. Oh no. All right, I, I, okay. Let's click here. Oh no, guys, it's not working the same. Ah, uh, I don't want to put it in. What about, I don't want to put it in here. That would be a disaster. Buff. 
that way. Oh no no no. Oh dude. <laughs> Why is Wiki not showing up? Oh This is bad. There was a root button to the right. Yeah yeah, I know, but that's this is not how you do it. You're supposed to, on on the last waypoint you click on it, you go to airway, and they're all listed. Oh no. <laughs> uh ah. You see, when I added the SID, it added buff and manual, uh, but it's not even going from here. And it's it's picking out high and low airways. Oh, dudes. You can create a holding pattern. I don't want to do that. And I've noticed that the flight plan is um, yellow. I'm just wondering whether it should always be green. Because... Oh, this is secondary. Okay. This is the secondary flight plan here. Oh, no, 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 no. This isn't fair. Because now it means I should do a different flight. Okay, Buffalo, 32, flying. Maybe if this said buff instead, but I, we can't because it only recognizes it as buff eight. Oh, that's a swine. Yeah, you see, it brings the list out and what if I say none? I mean, it wouldn't be accurate, but let me just have a quick look at that. Yeah, no. Still nothing. I don't think it's actually corrected that. Okay. Let me go into buff. And transition. Is there any? There isn't any transitions. Well, of course, no, there isn't. Oh, this is a letdown. I mean, it's okay. I can import the. I can import it via SimBrief. One thing to note: if you do import it via SimBrief, um, it will miss off the the destination airport at the end, and you have to put that in yourself. That's okay. Saxon man, triple one. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, it's here, dudes. It's here. You click this button, and they're all all the airways get listed. What if I go against the rules then and and put it in? I mean, if it's not listing the damn thing, it's probably going to say not in database then, right? Ah, oh, shoot in hell. Let me just double confirm here with Simbrief because something ain't right. Right, direct to buff, fine, direct to wiki. Direct to KN66Y, direct to LRP, onto the Hyper 8 star, and into Kiad. I, I, I don't know what's going on. All right, I'll tell you what we'll do then. Oh, this is such a nightmare. See, now it says flight plan one of two. the other temporary. That, is that going to get rid of my other one? No. Oh, we're going to be let down here. Um, right, so let's see if we can clear that one. Oops, did that not? I didn't do it, did it? 
clear here. Don't take me to this screen. Wait a minute, I'm just going to check my notes, make sure I haven't done anything wrong. No, the destination airport gets entered. Right, it says here, entering waypoints. Let's just clear this up. Okay, entering waypoints. Start by pressing the departure icon. Okay? Then enter the airway directly or press. You don't enter the airway. Or press airway to see the list. But there is on the departure airport. I think I've written this down wrong because on the departure, you, there is no airway. There's the SID, but you won't get any airways here. Oh, this is nasty. What? I don't know what it's waiting for me to execute. It's... I don't know. Let's start again. Oh, flight plan initialization. Boot. Is there a way to, uh, this is, I wasn't expecting to have to go through this if I'm on. But let's, let me try and get the Simbri flight plan in. So it's KBuff. I hope it doesn't just mess everything up. I'm not used to this because I'm not used to the keys being spread out like this. K. Uh, no, why have you put a slashy thing in there? K I A. Oh, might take a couple of seconds. There we go. Delro. Okay, that's a. Hey? Is that on my thing? Oh, flight plan. What on earth? This is... <laughs> this is a little bit different to what you guys are looking at on the screen in that white writing. What? So if you go to, say, Del Rowe and click on an airway, they all get listed. Right, and then you just type in whatever the next one is. What the hell? Why, none of the waypoints on here match anything in the, in the, in the route on Simbrief. I don't understand. That's a terrible one, Saxon man. Right, Delro, Lurch, Bins. Where's Delro, Lurch and Bins on, on here? Maybe it would have got added in by adding the wiki. Wiki's not even on the list. And LRP? LRP? Is LRP on the list as well? I, I, I don't think so. No. Okay, so I think from... What the flip? Okay, let's go to TCON. And then click on Arrival. Which we know is at Kiad, yes. And we're landing ILS runway 01 right. Which is the worst runway to bleed and land on, because it's completely the wrong way. And you can see that the star on the screen is Hyper 8. So oh, let's see if we can that. It is. Hyper 8 via uh, that 
That's it. Execute. Let's get rid of the... Go in here a second. It hasn't put a SID in there. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm confused. I don't get it. I don't get why these waypoints don't match Simbrief. And yet this flight plan came from Simbrief. And it doesn't look like anything on my briefing here. I'm just going to go into the briefing route, uh, the briefing, and have a look at the route. It's exactly the way you guys see it. Okay, I've never seen this before. <laughs> but we will check it on. <laughs> oh, this is funny. We, uh, yeah, help me understand what's going on here. So, let's get rid of all the discontinuities, and then we will check it out on the on the on the plan the flight plan map fine you know if it gets us there cool um, I just don't know why it wouldn't enter manually it doesn't make any sense so if we click on this right hand part side of the screen we can get into flight plan mode dude tell me that's not the, tell me that's not the first page Oh, got to get back to the nav screen. Right, it's green. K-Buff is the first one. Then Delro is the first waypoint. Okay, go. Right, so there's Delro. So now let's increase the range, which is done by either clicking at the top or the bottom. So if we click on the top, it zooms out. If we click down below, it zooms in. Okay, that's how you do it. A list of hotspots for this screen can be found in options and 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 clock click spot but you can see here you have range plus range minus then you've got your format of your screen then you've got your navigation display your systems your engine performances and your map and then you've got your bearings on screen which I didn't even know you could display until I saw the video which is cool because then you can see your distances to your localizer and stuff which is all good information Right, so let's step this through. Now that we're in plan mode, when we go next, it won't go to next page, it'll go to the next waypoint. Okay, there's a go around blitz. Is that it? Why? That's the route? Yeah, that's it. Just like that. Wow, it looks less complicated than I thought it was going to be. Fine. it's It gets us there, guys. What can I say? And then we've got our go-around. We've got a holding pattern in case. But we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so now we switch back into normal mode. And... Yeah. Uh, well, let's put it this way. We have a flight plan. It's not what I was expecting. <laughs> yeah, the low and high is the airways. So I think I think what that is, is the low airways are airways that are used by small planes and stuff like that. And then you've got your high airways, which is used uh, by commercial jets. I don't know where we sit, actually, because we're kind of, sometimes we're kind of in the middle. Um, but I think, I think it's, I would imagine that anything over a certain altitude is classed as a high airway, and that's how it is. Anyway, so it says here, click on the flight plan, click on ND to get the nav page, click on the right side to get the plan mode, and we've stepped through the FMS flight plan, we've done that already. Okay, cool. That's the flight plan in. Let's go to performance. Uh, so we need to go to perf and then data in it perf in it okay 
Is that different from this? Data init perf init menu. Go to the init from here. So data init. I think this is where we want to be. Click on the wait key. Yeah. Nope. Enter cruise altitude and alternate cruise altitude. Okay. Uh, the alternate one. I didn't. I didn't check it. I'll, I'll find out. I think it's on the Simbri flight plan. We'll have a look. So our cruisy altitude, our cruisy one. Oh, let me get that crap off the screen, guys. Uh, bear with me a second. Bye bye. All right. So our cruising altitude is twenty one thousand feet. Uh, just double checking. I know for a fact that it is, but I'm double checking it anyway. Twenty one. So flight level two one oh. Where does it go? Uh, maximum cruise is the cruise mode and the alternate airport is I think Philadelphia by the looks of this I'm pretty sure it is KP H L and the cruise altitude is flight level flight level I don't know is what it is so let's have a look so on here it should tell me um, I'm not a hundred. I'm not sure if it tells you. Ah, oh, yeah, we've got alternate. You've got initial altitude. There's our average wind. I think we have to put that in a bit later. Now, if anything, it's going to be here. But I don't remember where to find it. First time I had to look for this, found it straight away. Second time, I got lost. We're actually looking for references to uh, KPLH, K KPHL, sorry. KPHL. Okay, so you see here we've got F210, which is the altitude for Buffalo. This is Philadelphia. I don't seem to to have. Where is it? It's not going to matter because we're not flying to it anyway. Destination alternates. Philadelphia. Oh, give me a freaking cruise level. All we've got here is weather information. <laughs> I'm I'm just gonna put the same in. It's not going to matter because we're not going to be flying to it anyway. I'll have to find out where to look for it. Well, well, damn you. Damn you, boy. Yeah. I'm just going to uh, draw a little veil over that one. And we're just going to put in two zero zero. There you go. Uh, Von Doodle, so flight plan submitted is different from arrivals and approaches. Yeah, it's, I know, it's, the, what? Does it include approach procedures or is that something different? Uh, what it doesn't include, right, so it does, the sim brief does actually include the SID and the STAR in there, but I like to use sim brief just for the, the meaty bit in the middle. Um, 
the SIDS and the STARS, I like to put it in separately when I program in the um, arrival and departure airports. But information, it won't give you information for final approach because it obviously can't because I don't know, it just doesn't. <laughs> I'm sure there's reasons. They all change all the time, so. Right, so now, where are we? We're on the uh, wait key now. Now, here's the thing, because the fuel that you put in has to come from up here, which I hate, because it's about as... It, it's just not accurate, really. So, enter the wait key, enter the zero fuel weight and fuel on board. Note the takeoff trim for rudder pitch. One point one up, but I haven't got anything on yet. So, I hate doing it this way. Right, because it's in pounds, we've got to do the conversion. Actually, it's in gallons. Let's convert that to pounds. So, fuel is 2,200 kilos. Give us kilos, flight sim. Please, just, you know. Um, passengers, 56 of them. Can we get that on here? Yes, we can. I'm going to love working this out. It's just going to be... On cargo, 4,267 kilos. It's just going to be a rough um, estimate, I think, because this is crazy. So, does anyone know what the conversion number is uh, to get to pounds to kilos? Uh, so, I'm just going to ask how to convert... Is it 2.2? How to convert pounds to kilos? Kilograms. So, yeah, one pound is 0 0.4 kilos, but one kilo is 2.2 .2 pounds. Okay. So that means if I take the kilos and multiply them by 2.2, .2, I'll get a rough pounds. Yeah? So... Ah, oh, thank you, Andy. Yeah, 2.2. .2. I thought it might be, but... Right, let's get the old calculator going. Oh, boy, this is a lot slower than I was expecting. All right. So, we have a fuel weight of 2,200 kilos multiplied by 2.2 .2 is 4,840 pounds in total of fuel. I need you to, I would like, please just pull up, thank you. So, 4,480 divided by 2 is 2,420 a tank. And I don't mind, there we go, I don't mind being a little bit over. Cool with that. All right, that's the fuel. Passengers, I'm going to leave that later. <laughs> I don't want to do the passengers. Right. Payload, 80, look at this, like it's just, ah, here, cargo, okay. When I change this, is it changing the cargo? Oh, no. Why are you touching the cargo? Okay, so we'll have to do passengers first then. Damn. Right, so we have 56 passengers. So, in my opinion, that should not count the pilot or the co-pilot, or the flight attendant, or anything like that. So, we can see the pilot. Everybody is weighing 200 pounds, right? Which, okay. If we divide that by 2.2, .2, we get 90.9 kilograms. So I'm going to, I believe it is, I thought it was 80, but it looks like it's 90 per person. Uh, so... If we get 90 and multiply that by, by the amount of passengers, that gives us 5,040 pounds. And we want to split that between 5. So if we divide that by 5, actually it's not a dead split because in the middle there's more seats, but whatever. 
that we won a thousand and eight pounds in every row. Am I doing this right? I could manually type it in, but it's a pain in the uh, derriere. So, yeah, it doesn't tell me how many passengers. Like, if I alter the amount of weight, it doesn't tell me the equivalent in passengers there. So, cargo is quite heavy, actually. 4,267 kilos multiplied 2.2. .2. 9,387, so we divide that between the forward and the aft of the plane, so let's divide that by 2, and that gives us a grand total of 4, 6, A? I've done that wrong. Let me do it again. 4, 2, 6, 7 kilos multiplied by 2.2, .2. gives us 9,300, divided by 2, it's, oh yeah, no, I did do it right. It's it's close to what the kilos was, but it's divided into the two two sides. But now here, it's four six nine three point seven. Let's just do four six nine three, if it'll let me. You can see the trim is altering. Four six nine three. Hopefully this trim should stabilize now. Okay. So that's it. So my zero fuel weight. This is the this is the weight of the plane empty. There's got to be an easier way than this, guys. Yeah, there is. I think, yeah, I think it is. We've put the weights in. So we've got the fuel, we've got the payload, and we've got the... And we've got the passengers. Yeah, that's it. That's all we need. Click off. Goodbye. So now, to get those figures, what we've just typed in should be on here now. That should reflect here, and it hasn't. Dear, why not? Why hasn't it calculated these? This isn't normal. As I'm changing this, it should change Why is it not changing here? I'm, I'm sure it used to do that. Don't make me hate this plane. Where are we anyway? Okay, we're here. It should have put these in. It should have filled this in for me, and then I just transfer that to the MCD or FMS, whatever. That's a lot of payload, by the way, but it's fine. It, it seems like it's normal. I don't understand why this is not showing up. Maybe, I, maybe I've got to put it in. So, all right, let's take it off some brief. So, zero fuel weight, estimated zero fuel weight is, thankfully, in kilos, right? So estimated zero fuel weight, 17,277. I guess I'm getting mixed up with how this plane does it. Fuel on board is... Two two one one. 
and reserve fuel. What are you guys seeing on the screen? Good. Uh, reserve fuel is this final reserve. 854 kilos. Okay, that gives us our trim. 0.6, which I'll set in a minute. So, the actual fuel on board is shown in kilos, right? So, 2211, so it should be 1100, no, 1105, yeah? <clears throat> so, if we go to our engine page, that's not right. That's not right. Well, give us, give us me engines. No, it's no, not no. Oh, for f <laughs> guys, it's my first flight. Bear with me. Systems and performance, top two diagonals. I'm sure the engine page is shown here. Right, so we've got fuel on board. That has to, this number is simply taken from whatever is here. That's it. It doesn't mean that's how much fuel there is on board. It's just what you've typed in. How much the fuel there is actually on board is on this screen. But it ain't there. No, no, not you. How the flip do I get to the right screen, guys? I'm clicking on the hotspots and it's not a hotspot. No. No. That's not it. Ah, uh, uh, you know what? Let's try... Try that. I'm sure I know it looks like a plane. It looks like a, it's supposed to look like an aircraft. Where is this? Thank you. Holy. Is that the one? Yeah, it doesn't look like an aircraft. That's a different screen again. Yes. So, 10,080 kilos on each side. This is the actual fuel, so 2,160. That's a little bit less than what we want. We want 2,200. So yeah, if you double that up, we, we need this figure to match this 2210. So, all right. What a faff this is. And all this because they couldn't be bothered to to do this on the uh, on the EFB on the iPad. I'm going to call it an iPad because then everybody knows what I'm talking about. So we need this to say. Hold on. Have I got more? I've actually got more in the plane than I need. Two two one zero is the amount we want. Divided by two, one for each engine, is one one o five. So we've got a bit less. So we need to get that to 1105. Uh, so go up to 44 maybe. Yeah, as best we can get. Thousand. No, it's 1,100. You don't be arse. There. If we step it up to 45, it's 1130, which is. We're going to end up with like 50 more kilos of fuel. I don't want to do that. So we'll just make do with that. Oh, gee. I could type it in here if I wanted to be. But even then, it doesn't work. If I type in a slightly higher number, it doesn't It, it doesn't go up in smaller increments. It just doesn't. So we can't match the fuel here. That's gone to 2260 now, so... What have we got here exactly? 2200. I'll just match it here. And all that's going to do is just make the, the plane, you know, it's just going to show me the correct digits here, which is what I want. 
Oh, flip. What a nightmare. I mean, who needs that rubbish? Angry. Hey, my man. Welcome. Oh, God, it's going to take me... This, you know, all this setup's going to take a lot longer than the actual bloody flight. Anyway, it's in. It's done. Finished. Don't touch it again. Um, <clears throat> now, we need to note that the trim is 0 0.6 up. 0 0.6 up. Somebody write that down, because oh, I'll remember it. So, click the perf button on the thing to enter the transition altitude. Already set, <clears throat> 18,000, because we're in the United States. Uh, click performance button again to get to the cruise page. Enter current and average wind into mean wind. Okay, uh, we did have that on Simbrief. Da, 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 da. Probably changed now, by the way, the wind is probably completely changed. Uh, but it is actually 274 degrees to and the speed of the wind is 36 knots in you go and i think and i think we've got it also now you've got the average wind for the alternate airport not really much point putting that in right now and also because we're not going to be going there uh right Check cruise mode is set to max cruise, of course it will be. Pressing perf again gets you to the approach page where you can see the trans transition altitude, the Q&H and the V app and the flaps landing config. These are just my personal notes. Uh, pressing performance again gets you to the takeoff page which shows trans altitude, runway length and course. I nearly said CRS there, but of course that won't make any sense. Uh, oh yeah. 306? Eh? What? What what? We're taking off runway 32. How can it be 306? It's 318. Does it know the runway we're taking off from? Yeah, 32 saying 306 degrees, Navigraph says it's 318 degrees. Anyway, whatever. Right, that's it. You'll be pleased to know that is the FMS setup complete. Wow. And now on to the exciting bit. <laughs> Final cockpit preparation. <laughs> no! Right. Check center display for any fault indications. There should only be the hydro ones. Right, so yeah, we've got the hydro. Fuel feed low pressure. That's normal. I haven't got the pumps on. Surely that's normal. Why wouldn't I make a note of that? Check amount of fuel in each wing. Make sure it adds up to the FOB. We've just done that. Click perf on ND hotspot to show data on ND, reset fuel use, confirm takeoff data. Okay. I have to make sure we're not already on that screen. <laughs> Click perf on the ND hotspot. Okay. So that is here in this bottom quadrant. So if we click here, clank. Okay, so click perf on HD box or to show the data on the ND, which is the navigation display here. Reset the fuel used. Done that and confirm takeoff data. And we click that. Takeoff data confirmed. Set the QNH. Okay, well, there's a few ways to do that <clears throat> <clears throat> to find out what the QNH is, but we can get it from here. Guys, nice. sorry this is taking so long, but I hope it's at least somewhat informative. Right, Q and H is two nine three seven, and it looks like this is set in. Uh, oh no, it's okay. It displays both. Cool. So that's. Buggeration. Decision height. Maximum decision altitude barometer. 
So what it, what was it? Oh shoot in hell. <laughs> Two nine three seven. Yep. Yeah, I just I had to confirm it. I'll leave it on the screen. You see when it says when it says Barrow, I'm I'm thinking of the uh, minimums and stuff, but it's not. Right, so 2937. And I want to make sure it does I haven't made a I haven't made a note of this, I don't think, have I? Set the Q and H. I would say that this would have to be set up on both sides, right? Oh, it's done it. Yeah, but it's put it to 3.8. What the hell? Why would that say 3.8? Oh, this plane. How can there be discrepancy there? Anyway. Right, we've done that. Using the hidden click spots on the engine page, red ones showing up down and validate, click through electronic checklist. What? Come on, mouse. Using the hidden cl click spots on the engine page, which are down here. <coughs> click through electronic checklist. On the second checklist, go through it. Ah, uh, the second one? What about the first one? All right, so I think we have up down and kind of like select or enter oh shoot I guess not I have no clue what's going on here I mean it's gone into the wrong page for a start and there is no bad. Up, down and validate, right? Now, up, down. Yeah, but there's no back. How do I get back? Guys, help. This, this plane is easier than this. I'm just making it look really hard. Why can't I get... Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It did it. Okay. So, this is up. This is down. Okay. Let's... I'm going to do both. Click. Oh, of course. That's why we missed that one out. Okay. Oh, right. Parking brake engaged. It is. Altimeters set, and now we're going to run through this. Altimeters set and checked. Do we have to click? Oh, I think we do. Right, parking brake engaged. Altimeters set and checked, done. Landing elevation. What, now? We haven't even took off yet. Yeah, we'll do it later. FMS, COM and NAV set. Yes. I mean, I guess. We could put in the frequencies that we want if we wanted to, but eh, I'm okay. Fuel quantity and fuel on board, check. We've done that. You see how it takes you to the right screen? This isn't the right screen. This is for engine fuel use. Engine fuel used, set. Yeah, we did that. Memo panel, check. Power management, set to take off, check, done. Procedure complete. Okay, cool. Right, now we're going to get to the exciting bit because we're going to be um, starting the engine. Uh, I've got a note here saying landing elevation should not be showing anything on the panel as it is set in the FMS. Oh, yeah, 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 I know that, yeah. Yeah, we don't, do, we don't use this like I did last time. All right. Am I happy? I, I don't know. Where's my, which is the nav? 
Yeah, there. In the top quadrant. So why doesn't it switch when I click it? Thank you. Right. Starting engine in hotel mode. What's hotel mode? And do you get your bed turned down? Right. So we have an option called hotel mode. I am not going to press it because that's going to ruin everything I've done up to now. Let's close this. Hotel mode is literally what I was saying before about starting up one of the engines, the right hand side engine, without the propeller. And that gives us, or simulates, an, an APU. Oh. That's all it is. Okay. So we're going to do that. We're going to start up. We've already got the propeller brake on from before. And so we're going to power this engine up, but not spin the prop. That easy. Okay. So it's just the same as starting the engine. That's it, it's just an engine start, except that there's no, um, there's no spinning of the prop. That's the only difference. Everything else is the same. So, remove the wheel chocks, close the doors. Actually, just done that. Uh, everyone's on board, so tail prop can come off. Uh, hotel mode, right. So, propeller base, da, 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 fuel pump to one wing light on. Yeah, cool. Right, let's go up to the panel. So, we want the wing light on, which I think is ooh, this one, bottom one. Yeah, wing light on, and we want the right hand engine starting. So, we're going to put the second fuel pump on. Um, that's it. From the fuel, we want engine start A and B down at the bottom. And a little bit of trivia, if this is a cold start, so your engine is like super cold and cockpit temperatures are getting a little bit warm, but anyway, if it is uh, a cold start then you would start A and B. If you are starting a warm engine, say on a return flight, you would only, you would use start A and then start B, or B and A. You wouldn't use that. This is only done from a cold start. Actually, I've said that wrong. Scrub what I just said. This is used on the first flight of the day when the engines are cold. That bit I got right. Um, thereafter, because you're using both starters. But if you keep using start B, you, you can, I think you can start the engines on either one, B or A. But if you keep using B, that part's going to wear out before A does. So what they do is, um, if it's not a cold start, then they would use start A on every even day. Now, I don't know which one, where the beginning of that is. Sunday? So Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, I don't know. But every even day, I don't know what the, how the hell they work that out, because the week's seven days, but anyway. Every even day is a start A, and every odd day is a start B. Every cold start is a, is both. And that way, it just wears the parts out evenly, I would imagine. Okay, so we're going to press start 2, and when NH% percent reaches 10, we're going to switch the condition lever into feathering. Uh, and then it says, this is if the ITT is lower than 100. If ITT is higher, in other words, if the engines are already still warm, switch the condition lever to feather when NH% percent is 10% off ITT. Right, okay, I should explain that. <laughs> right, so we have, uh, where is it? NH, here. So, if my ITT is 5 because it's cold engine, if I had... If the temperatures of the engine, right, let's say we just got all the passengers off and we're ready to turn around and come back, the engines might still be warm, so let's say they're at 150 centigrade. Then instead of waiting for just 10%, we're going to wait for 10% of the ITT heat. So if it's, if it's 150 shown on here, then we're going to wait until this rises to 15%. Right? If it's 200 degrees, we're going to wait for this to rise to 20% before we feather the condition lever. Got it? Got it. <laughs> Otherwise, we're just going to do it at 10%. Oh my god. Okay, let's get this done. So, 
Engine, are you enjoying this? Yeah. Engine two, start. Okay. So when that hits 10, we're gonna feather the conditional lever. I'll probably flump that as well. So conditional lever two, up. There we go. That's in feather. Right, now what? Da -da 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 ignore bleed error one, it says. Air bleed one, ignore air bleed one, error. Now it's working like an APU. Okay, so we're just going to wait for that to power up. And uh, you should be able to see the heat, the heat haze, the heat distortion coming off that. I'm trying to position it so it can be clearly seen, but it is there. Put it against the word delta, maybe. Yeah, you can see now, right? It's running and the propeller isn't. So now we have APU power, which means we can turn off the engine starter. We don't need that. And we can also turn off external power. Now, if I click this switch and everything goes off, then I've done it wrong. Oh, okay, we're no longer running on external power. So the ground power unit can now go away. Okay, we're close, guys. We're close, we're close. <coughs> uh... Okay, now we have to check that BTC is closed. BTC, oh, where is it? It's a it's a button that's got a guard on it. Where is it? There, BTC. Okay, <clears throat> check the BTC is closed. It will be. Check that the bleed pack valves are open. No, they've got to be down here. It says here, cross valve open. Cool. Throttles at ground idle. Uh, yes, they are. Make sure the correct rudder trim is set and nose wheel steering is off for pushback. Ah, this is where it's going to get interesting because we're not going to get pushback. We're going to do it ourselves. Uh, wait a minute. We're doing this... Just with the APU running. Yes, of course we are. Yeah. Um, make sure the correct rudder trim is set. I was wondering when we were going to come and do that. So it was 0 0.6 up, wasn't it? Uh, God. Where, where were we? Where? Where? Where was? Where? Yeah, I know where it is. It's in the weights, but it was 0 0.6 up, as I recall. It was. So let's make sure that we got that. So right now we're running. Oh, it's done it. Well, okay, fine. It's set already. It must have done it on its own. Right. So if we were going to get pushback, we would indeed. Uh, uh, flick this switch and turn off the no steering. Whoops, it's a, it's a little tricky thing to get to. I, I have to do that to get to it. We would just turn that off and now we can't steer the plane and it just makes the front wheel free and easy for the tug. So, we are actually going to do a power pushback in a minute. So, the the. the we have to run through the before propeller rotation checklist. It should be there. Okay, let's click on that. Right, CDLS, which is forgotten, but yeah, we'll check. We'll go through that one. Uh, actually, wrong one. Go back up. FMS and takeoff data is done. We did that. Trims, all three axes set. Yep. Tail prop is on board. We've done that. There's the plane thing. That one. That's the screen I was trying to mention before. Right. Doors closed. Yes. Seat belts are on. Yes. Beacon light is on. It isn't, but I'm going to do it right now. I love the way the screens change for you. That's freaking damn cool. Okay. We're also going to get the... Oops, 
we're also going to get the taxi light on, I think, right? And I think that's it. Strobe light can go on. Logo light doesn't need to go on unless it's dark. That's it. Okay. And it stopped raining now. So you can go away. Um, right. FMS and takeoff data can be found on the screen. It shows TO confirmed if displayed is okay. We've done that. Right. That's that. We're done. Stage four. Engine start. Push. Right. Now we're going to say, do we want a power back or a push back? Push back is the usual, what's preferred. Hey, Aquatic, how you doing, my man? Welcome, welcome. Sit back, enjoy. <laughs> uh, approaches, etc., depend on how the airport feels at the time. Yeah, exactly. And also, it depends on how the wind is blowing. If if the wind suddenly changes direction, then the active runway is going to change. All that stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, the only time you would use a power back is if you are at a small airport, there is no ground services, there's no personnel around, um, but also you need to be in a space where you've got enough room to move because you need, you need to be able to know that there's space around your plane, you're not going to hit anything. Um, we're going to be okay. I don't like being near that jetway, but we need to go nose left because we're going to taxi that way. Uh, if there is a incline on the taxiway, it's likely that the plane might not be able to r steer itself around, in which case you'll just have to stay with a straight reverse without turning. It depends. It's amazing. Look, I've got the I've got the dome light on in the cockpit, and look how the pilot the co-pilot's lit up there. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. Right, we're going to do a power back because I want to show you guys it. I've never done it before, but we're going to have the plane reverse itself backwards. Uh, and I'm just going to go in a straight line and then maybe do a turn uh, until we're pointing somewhere on the taxiway. Which, from what I can see, I think that's the taxi line. So it is because that's where the green lights are. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be fun getting there, isn't it? All right, so for the pushback, we don't need the procedure noted down because it's just done by GSX or whatever. So for power back, make sure the nose wheel steering is on. We know it is. Uh, let's get rid of this. I don't know, dark, dry, whatever. So click off the propeller brake. So, oh, by the way, obviously, before you start the power back, your plane has to now be in hotel mode, which it is. So, now we're going to take it off hotel mode. Uh, I believe, you have, do you have to press this again? I don't know, the hydraulic auxiliary. I don't think it makes a difference. So, take the cover off, and the moment we start clicking that off, we should now get the prop spinning right it says set condition lever 2 to auto what oh okay I was wondering when we're gonna start engine one but yeah okay when well, now we need power on the we need power on this propeller so let's push it to auto and that should give us a mega bit of power just enough to get us pushed right we need both engines for that though wait for the NP to stabilize at around 70% so if I'm not mistaken I think it may go up and then come down a little I don't know but yeah it's there 70 yeah around 70 Okay, turn on the probe heat. Oh, now we can do it. An anti-ice if necessary. Well, it is a pretty cold day, so I'm turning them on. Uh, anti-ice, it's already set up, isn't it? Yeah, but procedurally, that's what you would do. Mm. 
check the hydraulics page to ensure 3000 psi on all braking systems. Okay, hydraulic system. I think this is bottom eight. Oh, I have to try and remember these guys. Oh, top right. Okay. So we're looking for 3000 psi of pressure on all brake systems. I'm actually looking for a way to get to the correct page. <laughs> Oh geez, are these hotspots correct? Why isn't it taking me to the page I want? Oh, dude. No. Oh, that, that doesn't change anything. Thank you. I have to hold the button in. So we got 3,000. 3,000 on the emergency brake, we've got 3,000 on the prop brake, 3,000 on the normal brake. Good. Next. Carry out anti-skid test. Oh, we've got to make sure that the TRU as well is, is on. Carry out anti-skid test. And that just lights up. With those anti-skids, that should go now, I think, off the screen. Fuel feed, low pressure. Yeah. I'm hoping that's going to go away, along with the air blade, once we get the other engine on. Uh, right, extend flaps to 15. We can do that now. I'm going to try it with my throttle. There we go, 15. Make sure the systems page is shown on ND. And start engine 1. Uh, top right. Lippity jippity, what's going on? Is this the one it means? Systems page. I don't see why we would need that one on. This one? That would be good. Okay. Start engine one. Fine. So, engine one, fuel pump is on. That's got rid of that low pressure light. Uh, I have a feeling we're going to have to put that down again. And click start. And when the reaches 10% on the NH. We're going to feed in the conditional lever, which works even though it says no entry on my icon. And that's going to bring up the oil pressure. Don't expect me to memorize all this, by the way. <laughs> One day I will. One day I will. Okay, we have good stuff. Okay, it's stable. So now we can set the condition lever to auto. We have two fully working, fully blasting propellers. All right, let me just take the, uh, the dome light off. Right, um... Observe low pitch showing on centre display to both engines. It is indeed. Make sure AC wild generators are on on the overhead panel. They are indeed. Uh, that's these. We did that at the start, but we everything gets double, triple checked. Make sure BTC is in the open position. You can tell that because we have a uh, green horizontal light going across, which is showing this open circuit here. So that's correct. Mm, make sure cockpit com hatch is closed. This is procedural. It's just to make sure that this document hatch here, which is what you, it's a little door you use to pass documents through. So just make sure that's closed. Switch on the transponder on the ND. So we can do that. That's not on the correct page. Uh, okay. So we want the transponder, which is X PDR. There we go. Okay. So transponder, we can click that. Transponder on. Uh, rotate engine start button to the off position. Yep, I should have done that before. That's it. Now we've got to run through the before taxi checklist to make sure that we've done everything. That should come up on here. Okay. 
FWS is a, a, not quite sure what that is. Flight warning system? I don't know, RCL. The RCL button is here. I think the recall button. We have to press that. Yes. Cockpit com hatch is closed, yes. Uh, CL uh, conditional levers one and two is set to auto. Anti icing is required. I've got that on. Make sure that I love that. Make sure that the TRU is on and checked. It is. It's got a green box around it. Anti skid test, we did that. Flaps are set to 15. Nose wheel steering is set to on. And that is the uh, before taxi checklist complete. Now, at this point, you would request taxi permission from ATC. And so we turn on the taxi light. We've done that. Click check that the plane is clear left and right and release the parking brake. We've got about to move, guys. We are about to move. So, parking brake. Uh, this one. This has got two positions. I, I caught me out a number of times. So, parking brake now off. I'm just going to hold the brakes because it, the propellers are moving the plane. And we're going to put the throttles into the reverse position. Now, I don't know if I can do this with my actual throttle by using the reverses mode. I'm going to try it. So hold the button and push forward. Nope. Nope, it doesn't like that. I'm going to do it manually then. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. It looks like I can't... No, when I click it, it goes forward. Okay, this is going to be an issue then. No, pushing, no, using my reverse mode. Okay, I'm going to have to set up a key for this, I guess. What about this button here? Can I not click that? Okay. Okay, I'm going to apply the handbrake and see if we can get a, a reverser option. So I want it on my... I think a keyboard will do. Just press one key to get the throttles into reverse. Let's see. So search by name. And we want reverse. Toggle throttle reverse thrust. Perfect. Uh, um, I don't know. Altar. Yeah, it's good. Everything's going to be used. Control R. Oh, awesome. It's available. Will it work though? Control R. You swine. Now then. How am I going to set this thing up? Portal hardware has a reverser axis. Yeah, it does, but not in the way you think. Let's see if it works. No, it's no. See, I, I, that's that's. I'm pressing a button and pushing forward. That's supposed to be um, reverse. On a Boeing and an Airbus. Burst of thrust. Oh, this is going to be a, a thing. You may have to get normal pushback. All you would do here is just put the throttles into reverse. Maybe it doesn't work with the parking brake on. you to be off please yeah welcome to live with rusty why doesn't this work old reverse thrust ah propeller there's a different one can we assign the same key i don't see why not because it can only work Pressing that button can only work on one. I only need it on a propeller plane so far, so let's get rid of this. I don't need to use it on any other plane. Let's see if that does it. Toggle propeller reverse thrust. Right, so. Fucking brake off. Control R. Come on, throttles, you need to go down. Oh, dudes. 
everything's not all the messages are off the screen I can't select reverse maybe there's an axis I can I can assign but what would I use Let's figure this out together. If anyone has any ideas, um, I'm up for it. I've seen real life pilots try to fly this plane in this sim and have these issues. I'm not the only one. So let's go to Rusty's Verpal, my joystick, and we want to. There is no reverse axis or anything like that is there what about hold propeller reverse thrust i don't mind doing that just hold the button in hold a button in i don't know if i've got this one in use no i don't number 12 will it work probably freaking not no why why does it not do a thing I gonna, have I gone through the building yet? No. Uh, just think of how much fuel I'm using here. <clears throat> um, why can't I just push this down? This is the reverse. Why won't you go in? To get it in reverse, right? Like, if you push the throttles all, all the way back, they're going to stay here. But to get it in reverse, you have to, in real life, I think you have to pull this little switch in, and then you then you can go down, and then it'll let you go in reverse. It's just like a thing that doesn't let you... It's like in a car, you know, you, you, in an automatic, you can't just go into reverse. It's a separate thing. I wonder if it's a combination of setting a binding and doing something on here. Throttle hardware has a reverser axis. I mean, I do, but it's... You see, what I, what I do on my throttle is, if I want to do full thrust, I push forward, right? So these go forward physically on my throttle as normal. But to get reverse, when I'm landing the plane, I hold a button in, and then I push forward again as if I'm going to take off. But the, the button acts as... It, it provides minus a 100% throttle instead of 100%. And it's effectively... It brings the reverse thrusters out. But we are in a prop plane, essentially. It's a turbo prop. So I don't know what the hell... I don't know what the hell to do here. We've only got limited... Options here. So thrust. Toggle, we've got toggle reverse. And then we've got propeller. But that's to make the propeller go in reverse, right? I don't think that's what I'm just gonna put it on both of them. So this is to hold. Go go in here again. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Okay. I am... Um, we'll just get normal pushback, right? But... It's a shame. Yeah, this is coming up, I think, because we've got the brakes on, I think. Right, normal pushback then. I will try and work it out, but it's simply going into reverse and the plane will, will actually go backwards on its own. It, it might be that it won't do it while the handbrake's on. I, I'm not really sure. I 
I would love for it to just, where you could just press the button, and then when you move the throttles, it would just reverse. It would pop down instead of up. Oh, that is such annoying. That is so annoying. Okay, I, I give up. Let's see if GSX can do it. If it can't, stop the engines to request ground service. Stop the engines. Never mind. How's the fuel? We're going to die out here. Where's my nav page? All right, we are wanting to go left, so we can't do that. We don't have the space. But let's go. Never mind. really don't know why it, the reverser doesn't work, but I'm going to ask people and see if anyone knows how to set it. I think there's other things I need to do. Taxi to the runway. Okay. Thankfully there's no collisions on here. The, uh, the list of things to do I need now is, the, there has to be more, ah, oh, there it is, the autopilot test. So we're going to taxi to the runway and carry out a brake test during taxi. But all the autopilot stuff gets set up at the holding point, I think. So I think, uh, let's have a quick look where we're going. No? You want to tell me? Try again. Uh, right, so the runway we want to take off from, I think, is this guy. So it's just slightly to the left and straight up. And then we take the... We don't go up here. We'll turn off here at, at, the, at the runway threshold. Won't we? Yeah, we will. So how many turns is that? Once we once we make it, it's... And now we have to cross a runway here. So what we would normally do procedurally is turn on the landing lights while we're crossing the runway. I'm not going to do that because... Can't be bothered. So we're going to make this... We're going to go one. And we're going to take the second one. Right. When you don't follow all the procedures, it's a lot faster. <laughs> but I want to. I want to know that I've done it the right way. It's a neat little Delta livery as well, Delta connection. So I guess these are used for just making connect connecting flights, right? I guess, but connecting between. Test connection for a reason. I don't fly often enough to know what it's talking about. <clears throat> right, so we take the next turn off, and of course we got rain, wouldn't we? And it's not one of those wipers that are working. Some of the planes, uh, the I can't remember which one it is, if it's the Phoenix or the fly-by-wire or whatever, but there's a couple of the jets where they actually does wipe the rain off, but it, it does leave streaks on the glass, just like you would probably expect. Right, just to confirm this is our turn-off, it is. So we're going to hold at the holding point and run a couple of checks, cash a couple of checks, and bounce a couple of checks. Oh, 
Okay, so here we are at the holding point. We will stop here by the parking brake. Relax the throttles. Okay, carry out a brake test. Well, yeah, we did that. Bring up the nav display, we've done that. AP test, first officer, right, this is what the first officer would do. So we need to now, we need a certain set of parameters up on this screen here. So we need to press the heading mode. Clank. Press nav mode. Clank again. Press IAS, indicated airspeed, twice. Clank and clank. PD should now be the primary display. This is what I call them, primary display, navigation display. It's what I'm used to. Should now show heading select, it does. Low and pitch hold. This is the mode for the plane during takeoff. Make sure your initial climb altitude is set, but it isn't. So, yeah. Again, he's got so many missing why doesn't it fill in the missing bits? I don't understand this thing at all. 14,000 and then 10,000? Like, what planet is this flight list on? I mean, we're going to be cruising at 21,000. Where the hell is that even mentioned? We've got Buffalo and then 200 miles to Delro. No waypoints in between? Really? Is this because I haven't got a SID in here? This is the only SID that is out of this airport. Screw it up. It hasn't really done anything, I mean. Yeah, we'll undo it. See, I don't understand this. It doesn't look like a complete flight plan to me at all. It makes no freaking sense. But anyway. In that case, I'm just going to set the initial... I'll have to look at the navigation charts, I guess. I don't know. But this is making no freaking sense. I'm never flying out of Buffalo again. I know that much. Um, okay. Yeah not flying out of here again. So, flight directors are on. That's it. Right, once you take off, the LNAV mode, right, so we've got LNAV armed and it should engage automatically as soon as the plane lifts off. Set the speed mode to magenta, done that. Oh, now 170 is our climb. speed but don't we have to set that to a lower speed to start with I'll leave it at 170 this is when you switch this into the climb power management phase it's 170 for the climb and when we pitch up off the runway we want to be aiming for around seven and a half this line here seven and a half degrees um, yeah I'm not changing it now though aquatic <laughs> So at the hold mark, at the hold shot marker, which is where we are, press and hold takeoff config test for two to three seconds. Okay. Dude, I don't even know if I'm pressing the damn thing. Is that good or bad? Oh no. 
We can't take off yet, by the way. Uh, observe on the center display, there should be an OK. Oh, right, OK. I think it's somewhere around here. Let's see, if we can do both. I think that's... Do I have to remove the gust lock and then do it? I don't know. So, it's supposed to say, okay, so there's something not quite there. And normal procedures, you can run through it right now if you want. Yeah, I don't know why there's supposed to be an OK popping up somewhere on the display here. Something's not configured quite right. But I don't know what it is, and it'll take me... I'll never be able to troubleshoot it, let's face it. It should also bring up the before takeoff checklist, which I am guessing is... Um, <clears throat> anyway, we're going to do it anyway. So, uh, release the gust lock. Obviously, we won't be able to take off otherwise. Um, check the flight controls are all free. Well, of course they are. Diddly did. Of course they are. Um, on the ND, make sure TCAS is in auto. Now you say it. It is. Transponder set to on and altitude should be off. Transponder is on. Altitude off is not ticked, correct. On the mid right side of the P PD you should see XPLDR1. Yes, XPDR. Alt displayed. Yes, weather radar is required. Well, it doesn't work, but we'll get it on anyway. Voila. Turn that up to around the top there. I don't know, something like that. Uh, make sure airflow is normal. Yeah, it's probably not normal, but make sure all off lights are on, except for anti ice, which is as desired. Switch on both landing lights, of course, because we're just about to enter the runway. Right, before, run before takeoff checklist either at the holding point or if there is time, do it on the runway. We'll do it now. So, let's run through this. Takeoff briefing perform, yeah we did that. Gust lock off, flight controls checked, transponder TCAS done, airflow is normal, cabin crew has been advised, engine bleed as required, external lights are on, lateral FD bar is centre, that is your flight director bar. It's not centered, but I don't care. And rudder cam done. Okay, that's the before takeoff checklist complete. When lined up on the runway, synchronize the heading. We do that by pressing M. M, M. Just clicking that in should synchronize the heading that we're on with the aut autopilot, I guess. Wow, what a plane. Oh, the rain stopped. Oh, you can keep going. Yeah, you can go. What are we, uphill? It's just suddenly decided it doesn't want to move. Unless the parking brake's gone back on again. Well, how did you do that? Okay, handbrake is on, throttles are down. 
Okay. Transponder and TCAS make sure both are showing up on the primary display. TCAS and transponder both showing up. External lights, all lights except the logo light is on, correct, unless it's dark, correct. And the lateral bar. I don't know why this is not showing dead center, but this is your flight director, but yeah, I don't know. Don't know why. Check for green cross lines. I think as long as they're there, vertical and horizontal line, we're good. All right, that's good. There's eight documents here, guys, and we're moving on to number five. Take off and climb. Right, switch off the taxi light. Of course, we have finished taxiing, so why wouldn't we? That's this one. Magenta speed set to, set to 116. Now, I think what we set it to here initially is the V2 speed, or at least the rotate speed, but I, I would say the V2 speed. Um, and then the plane will automatically increase the speed, I think. Should we take a chance and see what happens? If it doesn't work, then we're looking at lots of beeps from the plane. Beep, 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 beep. So V2 is 110. So we could set this to 110 initially. Um, I don't know why it doesn't. It doesn't want to. It doesn't want to move in this mode. It'll move if I turn it to blue, but it's supposed to move while it's in magenta, and it doesn't. So, yeah, I'm just going to leave it. Leave it as it is. Note the altitude on the runway. Ah, yes, 720. There's a reason for this, because at 400 feet above the ground which in this case will be 1,120 feet. Uh, we need to turn on the autopilot. And at 1,000 feet, which is 1,720, or 15, but who's counting? Or 10, actually. Yeah, 7, 10. Uh, switch power management into climb phase. Target speed should be 170. Retract the flaps. Now it is at 170. So I'm going to call this... 720, I guess, yeah, 720. So, 400 feet, so 1,120. Autopilot goes on. And then, yeah. So, 1,120, and then 1,720 is our 400 and 1,000 things. Right, so... Parking brake off, push throttles forward to the auto position or the white markings. And then when we do that, we, we're not going to push the throttles to the max. We're only going to push them into these white markings here, which is where they need to be. And then that should bring these needles to the, to the speed bugs, which is these little sticky out bits here. The needles should settle right there. Hmm. We're going to keep the nose pitched down a little bit. Not going to put too much strength on it, but just a little, just to stop the nose from lifting off prematurely. At VR, we're going to rotate up to around 8 degrees. But the closest I can get to that is 7.5, which is this marker here. Right? Actually, no, it's this one here. I'm going underground. So this is 0, 5, 10. What am I talking about? Two and a half. Five, seven and a half, ten. So it would be here. We just pitch up to there. Once we get positive right, we go gear up. Once we've got the gear up, we can turn the yaw damper on the panel, on the autopilot panel, and press IAS, uh, indicated airspeed. That's it. Nice and easy. Let's try it. <coughs> Ready? <laughs> right, parking brake off. I'm holding the uh, normal brake, so we need to push the throttles up to the white markings. And it is right on the speed bugs, and go. Right, pushing down on the joystick just to put some pressure on the front wheel. And it's riding once again. Right, so we are taking off at was VR again? 108? Oh, a little bit more. 
Whoa, tail strike. That was me just, I was just way too quick. Okay, up we go. Positive rate of climb gear up. And then once we reach 400 above, we want to put the autopilot on. I'm going to have to start turning around. Autopilot can go on. Your damper has already come on by itself. Indicated airspeed. Okay, not quite happy with this. At 1000 above runway, which we're not yet. Oh, I didn't set the target altitude. What a dumbass. <clears throat> so now I'm stuck. Now... Now I'm having to do things out of, outside of procedure. Because <clears throat> I've turned VNAV on, but you shouldn't actually need it at all. I always end up going into the cruise position before going into the climb position. Okay, so that's going to reset the speed down to 170, which is where it should be. <coughs> but I'm in, I'm in VNAV and I don't want to be. I think pitch hold. Uh, and I'm going to start getting the uh, altitude all the way to where I want it. Cruising altitude. So, retract the flaps, done that, set alt knob to cruising altitude, done that, set standard Q&H uh, by pressing, right, there is a standard button here, okay, we've done that, and do the same on the co-pilot side, right. plane has got an 8 degree. So we've got LNAV and pitch hold, icing. But we've got that switched on, haven't we? Anti-ice? I don't know. I thought we hid. I, aren't they all on? wants to put on, I guess, engines. Okay, landing lights can go off. Normally at 10,000 feet we do that, but take them off now. At 10,000 feet we'll do the uh, seatbelts. Okay, after takeoff checklist. Landing gear up, checked, done. Flaps at zero, check. Power management set to climb, check. Engine bleed on. I think it would have to be, wouldn't it? Taxi and takeoff lights are off. Altimeters set and checked. Oh, 
Jesus, that was... I'm, I'm going to have to get used to it. But, yeah, we're up. Nothing's beeping, nothing's flashing. What am I going to do with this throttle? It's weird. I wonder if it'll work on landing. It tells us icing here, that's kind of cool. I like that. See, this this should light up as well, and it kind of hasn't. It's supposed to come up with the centre of gravity takeoff trim that the FMS says. Well, it's supposed to work it out from this, and then you click set, and it puts it into the... Or maybe it did do that. I don't know. And that's why I didn't have to adjust the trim. Who the hell knows? So now the conditional levers stay in auto, the throttles stay at the white bar the whole time. Is this icing angle of attack? Is this what that is? I don't know. The plane's a little bit faster than, than there, but anyway. So we just have a slow climb. It doesn't climb as high as the pitch isn't as high as the jumbos. You know, Airbus, Boeing, those things. I say jumbos. So we've got anti-icing on here. Yeah. When you set the um, ILS frequency, right, for coming in for a landing, you can you can have it displayed. Yeah, just like where this VOR is, the buff. Remember buff, our first one. There you swine. Looks like it's included here anyway. I don't know what the hell it's doing. Buff is the airport though. That's the VOR at the airport that we just left. That's why it's getting further away. So, now that we're up, I have to run through these uh, notes while we're flying. So we're just approaching 10,000 feet. So at 10,000 feet, we want to switch off the landing lights. I did do that a little bit earlier. Um, yeah. So 10,000 feet. And then we want to check the cabin pressure on the systems page. It's the one with the plane. It's the one with the oxygen supply shown on it. It's known as PPSI and the needle is okay at the 12 o'clock position, around 3.9 PSI. Apparently it's a good thing to check cabin pressure uh, at 10,000 feet and at 20,000 and regularly during the flight, just to make sure you're not killing your passengers. Uh, okay, so seat belts can come off, uh, I uh, phones can be used and iPads, so my passengers are happy. So, check cabin pressure. So, I think systems... I forget now. I have to remember this. Oh, I know. I, I know. I'll find a way to remember it. That's what I'll do. Right, so... NSPM. No salt or pepper, mother. No, is that going to work? If I get something in my head, I'll, I'll never forget it. NSPM. NSPM. Hmm. PM, I'm thinking something Prime Minister. No silly Prime Minister. Okay, no silly Prime Minister. There you go. No silly Prime Minister. So, if it says in this... Uh, where is it now? Systems panel. So, NS. No silly prime minister. So, this is a, this is a panel. That's not the one, though. Do I have to hold it? Maybe get to another screen? No. There it is. There's more than one systems page, right? So, you've got to check this. Anything around four is good, and we've got that. And then we've got the cabin right 
here, which is, I guess this is okay in the middle there. That's good. So cabin, cabin pressure is good. Nobody's uh, passing out. 22 degrees. Very good. Go back to the nav panel. No silly prime ministers. Got N. <laughs> it works. Uh, we can check the cabin pressure again at 10, uh, 20,000. But we're not... Oh yeah, we are going that high. Yeah. Um, cool. Once you reach cruising altitude, PD panel should show Alt Star at the top. Yes, it should be replaced by the pitch hold. Then engage VNAV. Once plane split... Bleep, bleep, split, bleep, bleep, that's all folks. Yep. Once the plane speed is climbing, switch the power man. Right, so once we hit altitude, cruising altitude, the plane should start to accelerate. Once it does, we switch the power management into the cruise mode. All makes sense, doesn't it? And then that's it. That is the takeoff and climb. And then part six of my documentation is descent preparation, which means between now and then, there's nothing to read off. Now there are eight videos and I've only got six documents. That means that I've missed out seven and eight, which I think might be to do with landing. So I'm going, when it comes to the landing phase, which I'm already my weak point, I'm actually going in, I'm actually going in blind on that one. So we'll see. But we are up climbing and everything is good. Cabin pressures are good. Engines are exactly where they need to be in between the green and the yellow. If the fuel gets a bit low, which it shouldn't because we have got extra to go to the uh, alternative airport. Um, I'm going to turn the anti-ice off now because I think up here we should be kind of okay. If it, it it'll, it'll warn us if not. Is that the warning though? I thought that was just on there because we had it switched on. Let's go back to payload. See, now I don't know whether this was showing because we had it switched on or whether it was a warning to say switch it on. Huh. So these are all your different checklists you can have a look at. Um, you can just go to any one of them. So this is our descent checklist. Let me have a look at the approach one. And then you've even got one approach and then before landing, two separate things. But we can run up and down and it won't change anything. So seat belts, landing lights, altimeters and cabin altitude. Okay, that seems easy enough. And then on the approach uh, before landing, advise the cabin crew, landing gear down, flaps checked, power management set to, oh we, oh, okay, power management goes back to takeoff position just before landing, okay, TLU low speed check, I think that comes up on a display, this, this here, uh, I guess just, as long as it's there is good, right, icing AOA light, as required, external lights on. Does that mean, is there an icing AOA button or something? No, mode select. Anti-ice auto mode. Oh, doesn't work. We'll keep an eye on engine temps. They look okay. Yeah, again, I don't know whether this means you should put it on, and if so, 
If so... Hmm. Do you put just the engine icing on, the wings? I don't know, the propeller? Icing AOA. Let's see if we can see any visually. I'm not seeing any ice build up on the plane. Not even a bit. I've never flown a turboprop of this size before. I thought I had some... Oh no, I don't. I was going to say, I thought I had some uh, internal camera set up, but it's not. It's on the small one. Not this guy, though. Not the most dynamic camera, I'll give you that. But... If we move out... can't seem to turn around, which is not normal. I didn't... did I do the synchronized heading? <laughs> I did now. Yeah. So what are, we still have to climb, eh? It's given us a pretty decent height here. If I'm not mistaken, I think the max altitude on this is 25,000, but don't quote me on that. Got a course switch there. Altitude hold, speed hold. Yes, guys, so... What did... The, what did all that shenanigan take, anyway? Two and a... well, two and a half hours. So, yeah, just over two hours to get this thing off the ground. I'm sure the more time I do it, the quicker I'm going to get with it, because there's going to be lots of things that I'll remember. Every time I do this, I'll, I'll be remembering procedures until... Yeah, and if I, if I skip the procedural stuff, like, make sure the landing gear is down, you know, when you're actually on the ground, make sure the lever's down, those kind of procedurals which we know are going to be set anyway, if I skip those and just go to the important stuff, the necessary stuff, it won't take me too long to just do this from memory. I'll just make an, a, a note of because everything that's procedural on my on my documents that I've my notes everything that I've termed as a procedural like something that you check as a matter of procedure but doesn't need to be checked in the sim really I've got it in brackets so I know you know this is something you don't have to do if you don't want to and anything that's not in brackets is something that you should do would have taken you longer yeah, well, I mean, I I have notes that I've got that I'm going from, so I guess I didn't start that either. So I guess it's um, it's helped me quite a bit. The only thing I need, I say the only thing, it isn't the only thing, but one of the things that I need to sort out for sure is. Um, The, the reverse thrust, you know, I, I gotta get that sorted out. Find out how to engage it somehow with one of my... Because I don't have detents on my throttle, so I, I, I can't assign... I can't pull back anymore on the, on the thing. Yeah, it's annoying. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm just looking at this cloud like here. It looks like a, a geezer that's just exploded off the ground and that's just its remnants going up there. So we are flying to Washington Dulles Airport. bring up a map see where we are right now see what we're flying over if there's anything interesting uh, there's a lot of these little towns which people probably won't even know Westfield Mansfield Mount Jewett. There's the next biggest place we're going to be going. So we're passing, we're going to be passing over right now, the beginning of, oh god, how am I supposed to pronounce that? S U S Q U E Hannock, Susquehannock State Forest. And Sprout, is that Sprout or Sprowl? Sproul State Forest. That's what we're just approaching right now. We're just on the outskirts of it. Whoops. So all this basically is squ squatchy, squitchy, Susquehannock State Forest. Yeah. Make of that what you will. And it's all streaky. If you look, just look at this layout, the way it is, bumpy and, you know, squirrely and all that stuff, right? And then look at it on... Uh, hold on. Let me just give you the ability to ch check this. Right. So this is little nav map. And you can see here you've got the same kind of formations. Now, I've got Google Maps on this. I just can't remember how to change it. Map. There used to be a thing here where you could swap maps out. It, it would show you the maps, the map you were on, and you could change it. Uh, and I do have Google on here, but I just don't know how to access it from here. Ah, oh, here we go. So this is Google Maps Satellite then. Right, so here, this is us. There's Susquehannock State Forest. So this is what it looks like on Google Maps. There we are, flying southeast. Ponderosa. Under, 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 dun, dun. It's probably not the same place. Uh, and Washington. Well, that's a little bit busy, isn't it? Um, there's Philadelphia. This is our. This is our um, airport to go to if we can't make the proper one. There's ours. There's Washington, guys. Right. So this is. This is Washington right here. Whoops, did I lose it? No, I didn't. So here is Washington Airport. We're coming in on runway 1R. Look, this one. So we've got to come all the way down. And then we've got to do a U-turn back up here. Bugger. Yeah, so we're coming in wrong, runway 1R. Would have been nice to have the others, but... So that's where we are. So we're there. And we're going to be... I've lost it now. It's set to auto zoom. And that's why I lost it. But you get the idea. How the hell is it? Where are we? We're here. So our destination is there. Okay.
Yes. We'll make it. No, you won't. Yes, we will. We're gonna make it. You'll crash. I'm not gonna crash. Yeah, you will. No. No, this is gonna be a very easy flight. We're gonna set this thing down beautifully. ILS, we're gonna capture the localizer, the glide slope. Oh yeah, sweet as a nut. I don't know why I pressed outside, but there you go. Icing button is still on. Uh, let me just uh, have a little test here. I put the engine anti-ice on only. Does that make it happy? What if I go propeller anti-ice? Are you happy? No. I'm just wondering whether it's going to change anything on the display here or the icing up here. Um, maybe they all need to be on. So we've got rudder and elevation horn anti-ice. Side windows. So it looks like, let's put the whole lot on, just drain the battery. Okay, so everything's the same, fine. In that case, I'm comfortable keeping it off because I think it's okay. Now, what I should be keeping an eye on is this. And also, to know whether we've got a top of descent showing on, whoops, showing on our flight plan. How the hell am I supposed to know there? Well, there's 14,000. The last time I flew this, I did show a top of descent. This is flight plan mode. I don't expect it to show it on there, to be honest. But here? Oh, I don't like this. Okay, so at a rate of three degrees, I'll have to calculate this, at a rate of three degrees descent, we can cover a thousand feet every nautical mile. So if we're at 21, and we need to get down to 14, that's seven, th so from s seven nautical miles out from here, which is Lurch. When we're seven nautical miles, I'll probably do it at eight. We can start descending down to 14,000. Okay. Anyway, so we have reached cruising altitude. So we should have Alt star at the top. No. Then engage VNAV. Oh. Does that put a TOD on here? Now we set to cruise. But the plane speed isn't climbing. The plane should be speeding up now. 
and we also should we should have had also alt altitude star on the top okay let's go to cruising there you go I've turned icing thing off I might have had that switched on from before Come on, plane, speed up. It says plane might not reach its cruising speed of 240, but that's okay. But the plane needs to be like 200 or something, 210 at least. So we've got LNAV, VNAV, ALT. It hasn't gone perfectly. We haven't got alt star, or we didn't have it. And we don't have top of descent either. So we've got 16 nautical miles between Delro and Lurch. So the top of descent should be somewhere in between, and yeah, I don't think it is. Nope, it's not showing. And I don't know why. How accurate are the controls? Uh, I don't, I've never flown the real thing, so I actually don't know. <laughs> but I'm guessing it's not study it's not a study level plane but it's not a beginner one either it looks to me like I'm gonna to have to manage the descent myself which that wasn't the plan no not at all the plan was the plane would hit top of descent and it would see this this might screw up my next set of notes because It's just going to look weird now. See, we've got the descent preparation, but when do we start that? You can change any speed or altitude constraints by pressing the soft key next to it. Yes, I know. Ain't that something? So, for example, here, we don't have a constraint, but what if I tell it that I want the speed to be, say, 210 there. See, now I've put that in. Oops, actually, it's going 240 there. Yeah, good luck reaching that. And Delro. See, it's, it's added it here. Okay, what if I tell it that we can still be at 21,000 there? So let's add that in. So, uh, let's go... No, let's just put it in in raw format. One, two, three, four, five. We need to lose 7,000 feet by that in this distance. That's we can do that. I saw the other guy, the one that was showing me this. Uh, it was in magenta like this and he was able to adjust adjust it up and down if I set the target speed to auto mode then it turns blue and I can adjust it but I just can't do it here and I wonder how that's going to affect descent and landing and stuff
So this is where you put in... No, it isn't. <laughs> no, it isn't. That one. This is where we put in our ILS frequency. And on the standby, we can put in the go-around frequency, which would be the VOR next to the airport, I think. So, if I was to show that... Let me just bring up my Navigraph so I can see it. Alright, so we need to go to Destination Airport, which is KIAD. And we have the approach into 01R ILS. Okay, let's get rid of all the junk at the background. Alright, so we have the ILS frequency 110.1. That's what we have to feed in, and I think the backup, what goes into standby, is going to be this one, 103.5. I think this is the VOR that we put in, um, which is for, if we can't land or we have to do a go-around, a go-around, or a, I don't know if it's for go-around or if it's for, um, you know, an aborted landing, we have to go to the alternate, I'm not sure. According to this, approaching into 01R, there should be two, these two uh, waypoints. At 12.1 nautical miles, we should hit Mosby, and at 4.5 nautical miles, we'll hit Waxin, by which time, looking at this little propeller, that's when the plane should pick up the glide slope. We've got Mosby at 3,000 and Wax in at 1,900. Do we have that? Do we have that? Do we have Mox in and thingy? Yeah, we do. Mosby at 3,000, Wax in at 1,900. But wait a minute. Maxin is at no, uh, 4.5 nautical miles off the runway. I am not sure we're going to be hitting 240. <laughs> this is all wrong though. Shouldn't We should be slowing down. You can't be 240 knots hitting the runway. Mind you, there's no speed constraints that I can see. I don't understand this. Let me have a look. Uh, so we're coming in on Hyper 8, isn't it? So, let's have a look. Yeah, Hyper 8. Um, so, okay. I'm just having a quick look on my little Navi thing. Uh, Navi graph. So we've got Lurch. I know Lurch is there. Somewhere. Lurch, Delro, Delro Lurch, Bins, Hyper. I'm just following it on the map here. So we can't be over 250, that's fine. And then from Hyper, we've got Sig, Sig Bay. Ah, it's coming in on that one. So Moat, Bustle at 4000. No speed constraints though. Then Yak, yep. Next should be Tycon, yes. And then we've got the final approach, which is Mosby Waxin. And it's got manual here as well. But okay, we'll deal with that when we get there. Yep. So this does match up with Navigraph completely. I might consider starting to descend the plane.
after we make the turn here. Can't believe this. There should be a little white circle here that says top of descent. Uh, anyway, so the final approach going into 108R. I'm going to put some of this stuff in right now. So the ILS frequency coming in for the airport is 110.1. Let's get that put in. I'm going to use these bottom numbers down here. 1, 1, 0, 1. Okay. I think that should work. Is there an enter key? There. Okay. And the standby one is 113.5. So, 1, 1, 3, 5, and... Actually, it would help if you kind of just, you know, there you go. <laughs> 11355. Okay. So, uh, minimum decision altitude is 512. Unfortunately, this thing goes up in like tens or something or fifties I don't know what the hell so you've got to get it as close to 512 as possible I think I've already switched this on to MDA so uh, we got yeah it's tens so if 510 is going to be the closest however even though 510 is closer where are we so 510 is closer to 512 than 520 is but I believe that if the actual number is higher, that you're supposed to round upwards. So we go to... I've 20. And I think we have to click it. Oh, try clicking the right button, you dopey ass. You click it. Why is it flashing? Oh, I know why it's flashing. I know. Because it doesn't agree with the figures on the first officer's thing. So to stop it flashing, you have to come here. And I think... Just flick it, to end, just flick it over to MDA mode and it picks up the figure from the other side and it stops flashing. There you go. Right, decision altitude is set. ILS frequency is set. Uh, I haven't even got there on my notes yet because that comes later. So let's take a look. Descent preparation. You can change any speed. Sometimes it can be done. We'll make a copy of the flight plan. So make a copy of the flight plan. Eh, not really necessary, but we will. So, how to do it? Click flight plan on the FMS. Oh, actually, yeah, we're already on there. Go to new flight plan. Okay. Flight plan. New flight plan. Copy flight plan. Confirm. And click flight plan. Uh, think again right because ours is green so we've yeah so now we've got a second backup copy in the secondary flight plan right performance setup press performance on the FMS make sure the cruise page is all filled out yep it's even put the average wind in for the alternate airport I didn't do that Yep, that's all good. Everything is filled out on that one. Enter the trans altitude. I don't need to, I don't think. I think it should be set. Uh, ba -ba -ba -bum. Go to the approach page. Trans altitude is already correct. Enter the QNH. Yeah, good point. Uh, I don't know. I think we're too far away to get it. But it won't stop me looking. anywhere near to getting it. I 
I can find out on my phone. And we can enter. Okay, so let me go to my app, which is Avia Weather, and click plus key, and it's key, 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 K, K I A D, Washington Dallas Airport, and add. And currently it is 999 HPA. Okay, can you tell me that in the other old money? Okay, it's 999, which is... I don't know what the hell that's going to be. It wants it in hectopascals. Oh, okay, that's already set. What did I say it was? 999. There you go. That's the Q&H. Enter the mean wind. Oh, okay, so the wind is currently... Show me the meta. No, not in English. I want it in code. Uh, 330 at 8 knots. There's no gust, but what you do there is we go 330 at 8 knots, and there's no gusting, so we're going to enter 0. gonna have to think about descending at some point. Um, right, frequency setup, we've done this. Press nav on the FMS, da da da. Click on active active VILS1. Yeah, click on VSA. Oh we can copy it to two as well, I believe. Uh, so here we can go uh, one 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 enter and one, 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 three, five. Enter. Okay, so we have a copy on both. Tune the missed approach VOR on both sides into the standby boxes. Yeah, done that. No, I haven't. No, you haven't. Yeah, I thought it might be, but okay. Dude. One. Okay, clear. One, one, three, point. It's actually entering it in now. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, what else? Bring both bearing ranges. So the distance to these. Bring both bearing ranges on the screen by pressing bearing 1, bearing 2. I forgot to bring my altitude down. That's that's bad news. Now it's not going to do it, is it? I can't believe I'm having to do this freaking manually, and I can't believe the plane's not going to do it because because the VNAV it's not working. There's no top of descent. There's no nothing. Even when I did my first kind of half-hearted flight, where I didn't really know what I was doing, I still had top of descent on my on my display. 
and I still captured the altitude properly as well. So I have no idea what's going on, but we need to we need to get down to 10,000 feet by the time we get here. Let's get the bearings on the screen while we're doing that. So bearing one, bearing two. That puts them here. I'm not quite sure why it's showing the ADF. But okay. Yeah, we're going above. We're going too quick now. see what choice I have. I can't I can't use spoilers to add drag I don't think. We're just gonna have to deal with the overspeed. I think this is all screwed from here guys if I'm honest. Um, says on the ND screen select ND overlay and switch traffic to below and tick navaid and airports on select P oh this is your guys this is the uh, synthetic vision which if we put it on see this but apparently this is only meant to be used in situations where you have very low visibility I wonder if it's not matching the speed I wonder if I have to press IAS again to allow this button to be moved if I try it I've got nothing to lose at this at this point. Yeah, it doesn't make it move though. If I go VNAV. See VNAV's gonna hold the plane in, in oh no it's not. Oh we've got altitude star now. But we are overspeeding. I've got to get the altitude down to 7,000 and it beggars belief why it's saying FL 73 7,000 is here we are going way too fast the only way to slow it down is to not let the pitch of the plane so much but I, I can't well I could dethrottle I suppose for now but if I do that will it will it bother the autopilot if I do that I'm reducing the throttles I don't think we're gonna make this When the plane starts to descend normally, the descent checklist should come up. Obviously it hasn't done that because the plane didn't descend normally. I had to do it. As if I've got time to run through that now. done. Come on, I need 
due down at 7,000 by the time we get to the end of that line. See, we have Altitude Star now. That's good, right? Yeah, we just, we've just got the overspeed set up. Oh, and we need to set Q&H. So I'll do that now. I just did it rather than enter it. Oh, thank God it's burst off the speed there. <clears throat> Whew. I want to bring the speed down, just a bit more manageable. Right, so now the plane has levelled off at 10, but I, I, I've got it set to 7. Now why hasn't it... Uh, it's letting me down again, man. messing me about. Why are you sitting at seven? Seven thousand is armed. It knows it has to get seven thousand for here. And it's not even attempting to go down. caution is for, to be honest. Uh, yeah, we're just simply not descending, so... Yeah, and I have to do it myself. Which is, it's a pretty bad showing, if I'm honest. This is pretty bad. VNAV should be taking care of this. I shouldn't have to do any of this. I wish there was a button I could press here just to tell it to go into some kind of managed mode. I guess I should just fly this in manually. It's the only way. Just like last time. I cannot get a proper descent on this plane. It's weird, last time I, I did get a proper descent, but the flight plan lines were all over the place and the plane didn't know what the hell to do, so I had to take over. And now I've got this one, where we have... How did I get to that mode? Now we've got this one, Oh, you frigger. Where it... I do have the lines correct. You do know you're supposed to be just going up and down, right? Now I do have the lines correct, and it's not doing its thing. It's not v -naving. Hateful, hateful, hateful thing. So, this is our runway, but we have to go past it and then turn around. I think we're okay now for the VS. We can bring that up a little. I don't want to apply more, more thrust because We're going to reach there quicker. Now, Yak? What about Yak? Oh, okay, so we can stay at 4,000 there. So we're not going to meet the constraints. Or maybe we are. I don't know. I 
need to hold this at 4,000. I've never seen... Normally it's only... Normally it only says flight level when you're above a certain altitude. It doesn't do it under, say, I don't know, 10,000. It'll, it'll switch to 9,000, but it's showing FL there. That's uh, unusual for me. I've never seen that before. So we're settling off at 4,000 now. So that's altitude reached. So if I put you in Vina, will you follow the dam? Vina alt. Yeah, but I think there should be a star there. Press it again. Nothing. It's not going to descend again, though, is it? I'm sure. When's it going to need to descend? Mosby. Uh, 4.3. Okay, so after T-Con, t Tycon, whatever, we have this manual. Okay, I'm not too worried about that, really. Yeah, I wish I had time to look outside the plane more often, but I'm, I'm just kept so damn busy. I guess I should have gone through all of the tutorials first, uh, like the landing. So this is our runway, but we're landing on the other side, coming in this way. Oh joy. Put that back into takeoff mode because we're clearly not in the cruise phase anymore. Now, is there anything I need to fill in here? No. V up. So approach speed 104. This is the speed we should be approaching at just before we go and touch down. 4,000, 4,000, 4,000. Then we do a manual routing to Mosby. I think we can. I think we can still make the autopilot do that, right? I guess. Don't we just click that? Oh no, it doesn't work that way. And neither does the direct to either. It's going to be interesting. I wonder if the will the plane not still do it though, because it's on route. Yeah, it's on route, so... Can't see it now. <laughs> Took me longer to set the damn plane up. Um, thank you for all you guys who are still sticking it out with me here. Waiting for the inevitable um, meltdown. Not me, the plane. I'm already expecting to fail, so... Yeah. But, we're getting there. I guess next time I should check my flight plan for top of climb, you know, once we get there. I don't know why it doesn't fill in the details. Maybe if I had been able to set up the flight plan manually, it would have done it. But because I imported from Simbrief, maybe there was some issue there. Once we get to... Am I here in rain? Yep. Once we get to uh, Dulles, 
I'll I'll try. I won't do a flight, obviously, but I want to try and set up a a flight plan from a, from two major airports. So from Dulles to some other major airport, right? And just put the flight plan in manually, because last time I couldn't because it, it wouldn't give me the next waypoint. And uh, and see if it links up all the altitudes. But again, it's not going to do that until the performance details are in. Ugh. Freaking nightmare, guys. But it is still raining here. It was raining before when I checked it, and it was pretty nasty rain, actually. It, was, uh, it wasn't good. I'm sure that now we're really close to the airport, we can get the meta from it and have a look at saying. Okay. <clears throat> so, 10 statute miles of visibility. Yeah, maybe. Uh, we have rain, scattered clouds at 2,800, blah, 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 broken at 55, overcast at 120. That's changed, 2949. Oh, why are we still in standard? Shoot, I think I clicked that by accident before. We're not even at the right freaking altitude. I'm gonna put it to what I thought it was. to check it again. I didn't realize we were at standard, so we're not even reporting the correct altitude. F 29, 49, just remember those numbers. 29, oh, I did do it right. Okay. Oh, did I? Did. Now we're good. So I think once we turn onto Moresby and come in, I'll start setting flaps. And then... Well, we've got distance. What's the distance from Wax into the runway? So yeah, Moresby will start. See, there should be a D-cell here as well, shouldn't there? I wish I knew what was going on. We have an approach mode here. Dare I hit that when we get to Mosby? That'll be interesting. I'm sure it's all going to go pear-shaped, so... Enjoy. Sit back and enjoy. Get the popcorn out. What I may do is just go... How many flap settings do we have on this? Oh, jeez. Okay. Can I adjust my speed yet? So how the flip am I supposed to bring the speed down? Other than throttle. I mean, my throttle's not even in the right place. Oh, it's taking a bit long, I think. Is that detent like an auto? No, it's not. Yeah, I forgot to put my throttles back up. But I think in takeoff, I think power management, I think the autopilot's taking care of it anyway, so it doesn't really matter where my throttle is. the fuel. Ah, oh, plenty. If, if that fuel on board number is correct, yeah, plenty.
I don't know why I'm, I'm hitting a hot spot and it won't go there. Again, please. Six hundred and seventy kilos in each side. That's way plenty. We better make this turn. That's a sharp turn, boy. Right, so the three thousand is Mosby. I don't think this plane's gonna descend to it though. So Oh yes, okay, okay. I don't know where it thinks it's going, but we'll sort that out in a minute. I want to get the altitude in first. What's it doing? All right, so if we clear, take on. Clear. Take on. Okay. <clears throat> so, oh, the plane is doing it. Okay. I was going to have to, I thought I'd have to take over there, but uh, apparently not. We are going ridiculously fast. <clears throat> I'm going to control the throttle myself, I think. Because I don't know why, but it just doesn't want to do it. Okay, once I get to Mosby, I'm hitting approach mode and seeing what happens. Quite away from the airport. I think I'll stabilize around 160 or something. Actually, 170 is fine, I'm good there. I still think it's a little bit early to bring the flap down. Right, at Mosby we'll hit approach mode and by waxing we should pick up the glide slope. If, if, <laughs> the systems are working. Boy, oh boy. If I, considering that the VNAV hasn't worked very well, uh, like at all, <clears throat> I think if I bring this plane in, despite it all, I'll count that as a win. There's our runway. So we are 8.5, 4.8. Okay. So when this says 5. Point blah 2, when that says 5.2, we'll be 10 miles out from the runway. <clears throat> at which at which time I will engage flaps one to start the deceleration. And then once we hit wax in, it's gear down and flaps two, or flaps 30 in this case. <clears throat> okay. Here we go. Here goes nothing, guys. Approach mode, if I dare. Will it even do anything? I 
mean, I'm not getting anything on here about any localizer or anything like that. <coughs> one. I need you to start descending, please. What have I just hit? Altitude. Come on, needle. See, we've got the localizer in. Are uh, the... Yeah, we've got it. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to take over, guys. Have low visibility so where was that where's that ppm mode oh there okay so once again i'm i'm pushing down the plane doesn't really want to do it Yeah, so I count this as a fail, complete fail, because this plane, I am, you might not believe it guys, but I am pushed down on the joystick as absolutely far as I can, like it just won't. I, I can't pitch the plane down anymore. Full flaps, got the gear down, and it just doesn't want to go down. Okay. Freaking Nora. This plane. There's a lot there's still a lot to learn with this thing. I'm lining up on the runway 500. using this freaking screen. And as far as the uh, windscreen wiper goes, it can kiss my APU. I have no idea if the throttles are even responding. A little bit windy. Let's try and get back on track here. Oh, come on, play. I hate the fact that I'm having to do this.
Oh, now you bring the reverses in. Sure. Well, that was a fail. <coughs> no VNAV, nothing. Couldn't push the plane down. The flight dynamics are so bizarre. I could push it down to an extent, and then after that... Like, let's say I just was suicidal and I wanted to just push the plane into the ground. Like, no chance. But you get to a certain pitch angle and it just... It's almost like it's fighting against you. not seeing any guides to get me to anything there's no and I also didn't enable the traffic I'm gonna do that right now and we're just getting some stutters while all the planes are coming in You saw me do it, guys. I asked ATC for, for clearance to the gates. Let's do taxi to parking and acknowledge. Maybe it's somewhere else they want me to go, but too bad. I'll just park it myself. So much to learn. I haven't watched the final approach and taxiing videos, but it was the descent that went wrong, as it always does. I don't know why it seems to be the most difficult thing to learn. You know, knowing when to, oh Jesus, knowing when to start f flapping and you know but it was what let me down today was VNAV that was it VNAV was a disaster and I know on the takeoff something was a little bit iffy and I ended up pressing VNAV prematurely because you don't press VNAV until you hit the cruising altitude and I pressed it during the climb, so I don't know whether that messed anything up or not. And also the other thing that screwed me up was the the routing. I, I really wanted to put the routing in myself manually and I couldn't even get in feed in the airways. So oh shoot, he's not gonna stop, is he? Might be not thinking about to oh jeez. big they are compared to me. Man. Oh, we've got another spinner. Pity they can't stop that. I can stop it though. Oh, he stopped. Oh, I just got rid of them. Let's bring them back in. I have no idea where I'm going to go. I have to find a parking somewhere. Maybe up here. Yes. Well, it is what it is, guys. At least we got the thing down. At least I manually descended her and got her down. So I suppose there's something to be said for that. Maybe. So 
these are all these are all gates. Oh, is that a parking there? It's a busy airport. Can you not squeeze me and I'm gonna go in over there? Mine's all so all look so big compared to me. something and a half. the United flights leaving here. Man alive. Well, I don't know what you guys thought of that, but I definitely need to figure out what's going on on this. Um, now I could set up a quick flight um, flight route, but I don't think that the nav display will calculate um, top of climb or top of descent until it has the performance uh, details. I don't think so. Uh, is the bleed off? Let's get the uh, pill pumps off. And let's get the uh, ground power off, battery off. Count to one, two, three, and on. One. Do we have a fresh plane? I hope so. Um, so we're currently at Dallas. We could go, I don't, can't go Philadelphia, it's too close. What would be a decent, well, let me have a look on the map here, maybe. Uh, oh, it's not going to show me on the map. Atlanta. Oh, okay, I'm just looking, Detroit. Yeah, Detroit, okay. So, just get an iCow. So, Detroit. Airport, Michael. We want to go KDTW. KDTW. All right. So what we'll do? Oh, it looks like it's remembered my settings, has it? I don't know what's happened to this dude. Oh, there he goes. Are you are you initialized? Cool. All right, let me bring up um, correct screen. So we're looking at Firefox. Right. This is just for my own personal record. Probably not going to do anything. So Delta 2627 departing out of Dulles. Arriving in Detroit. Oops, that's not going to work. And using the airframe ATR 7200. 
and go. I want to see what the route is. If it's anything, it needs to be fairly substantial. It's a bit crappy, isn't it? MRB. Oh, no, okay, so we've got that. Followed by that, followed by that, followed by that, followed by that. Okay, cool. Right, let's feed that in t into the mouth of this thing. See what we see what happens. So let's get the GPS. I'm going to turn off the traffic because those jetway noises are a pain in the uh, right. Let's just copy that to the clipboard. Paste. No. Fine. Why? Because the plane didn't shut down properly. So we'll just initialize a new one. Performance figures, I don't know, we'll just we'll just make it all up as we go along and try and get some idea of what the hell is going on. Yeah, I I did the flat flight plan last time and I'm pretty sure when I imported from Simbrief I got top of descent, I got top of climb. Pretty sure about it. So this is this is not where we need to be. That's not the airport. So, Dallas International Airport. Isn't that, um, isn't this the airport where Die Hard started? Anyway, let's start here. Wasn't that at Dallas the first Die Hard? When his wife was coming in on the plane and they shut the circle in the, in the plane because they wouldn't let anything land. Wasn't that Dallas? Yeah. Yippee ki -yay. What the hell went wrong with the flight plan? The flight plan was a little bit skewy and I've never seen it so that a waypoint didn't come up. That was really weird. I think I'm going to change the weather just to make it a bit brighter in the cockpit. Don't care about the weights and balances. That's popped up because we're at a fuel station here. So let's just choose a few clouds. There we go. Okay then. Nice and easy. So, battery on, ground power, is it available? I guess we have to wait. Nope, it is now though. We'll just wait for the avionics to kick in. I will not be flying this, don't worry. No chance. Nope. Not gonna happen. I want to make sure that the flight plan looks good. That's it. Okay, cool. Right, let's get this thing on to uh, external power. And... Turn off the beacon light because it's pointless. Right, let's go. So, we're just going to make up some stuff as well. So, pause in it. Stuff that shouldn't affect anything, by the way. Okay. So, now. I'm going to wait a second. Ah. So, performance. So cruising altitude. I don't know what it gave me. Let's pretend it was... Oh, let's put it in. Uh, cruise altitude 20. 20,000 feet. Will 200 suffice or do you need the FL in front? Uh.
Thank you. Right. Uh, da, 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 da. Alternate airport is KCLE, Cleveland. If I have to guess, and it is a guess. K C L E slash. Can I get away with? I'll go back one. 16,000 so okay now then flight plan so we are going to enter it in exactly as it is stated on the screen and see if it does it before I do that I'm going to see if I can pop it up for you guys so we've got that to there. If I enable it on the screen. So this is our flight plan. I'm going to try and... Do we have an actual camera for this? Well, yeah, but that's kind of... What the hell is this white thing? Oh, it looks like we've got the fuel... The fuel truck is impinging on our daily duties. So, I can fix that. Bear with me one second and I will get us out of trouble. Okay. I just moved the plane backwards. So we should be out of trouble now. Yeah. That container was going right through us. Alright. So, this is not much use, but it doesn't help me. I'll tell you what, I'm going to make a custom camera here. Bring it down to the level I want. This in there. All right. This is the screen I wanted. All right, so taking off from Kayad, going to KDTW, Bubbles, W, there we go. Give it a second. Nothing in between this time. I'm not going to put the flight ID in, doesn't really matter. Alright then, so far so good. So after Kayad, we have a direct to MRB. So let's click here. And we're taking off from runway 30. And direct to MRB. I don't know if MRB is going to be here, is it? Yeah, you see, there's no SIDS on this list. Okay, let's just say none. Click Execute. <coughs> okay. And now I'm at a loss because it hasn't put anything in between. And so I can't click a waypoint. So maybe I should just pick. Let's go to trans. Isn't any? Okay, go to Sid. Maybe I should just pick one. So we're taking off from runway 30. Oh, sim brief, sim brief, sim brief. Why do you do this to me? Instead of giving me a seed, it just says direct to MRB. 
it's another bad route. We should have just done Gatwick to Paris. It would have worked. Um, all right. Quick check on Navigraph for a southwestern SID. So let's go to Kayard and it's Kayard. And we want a SID. So we've got Bun, Buns, Buns. Um, is that is that north? Buns, like that one. What are we taking off? Thirty. That doesn't work. Clutch, or clutch, or clutch. Wrong direction. Next. E. Wrong direction. Maybe there isn't any going in our direction, which is why it didn't offer us anything. All right, we can choose Rinaldi 4. It's not ideal, but it's something. And it gets us started. But I'll bet you I can't pick the airway. <laughs> Freak, I mean. I hate this already. I hate it already. You see, there is no... It hasn't given me a SID. I'm going to do a new flight from Gatwick. I don't have to be at Gatwick, but it, I suppose it helps. Um new flight. I'm not going to move my plane until I know that my flight plan is going to give me uh, what I want. So, bear with me guys, and I'm going to be here. Right, so this is Simbrief Flight Options. That's green. But you should now be seeing Simbrief. Okay. Right, so airline, Dell 2627, departing out of EGKK, landing in LFPG. Maybe we should just go straight to Gibraltar. <laughs> no, Gibraltar doesn't have ILS landing. Uh, Madrid? LEMD, I think it is, and that's a long way for this plane to go, but it'll manage. All right. So, climb profile 170 knots, which we know that was right. Three and a half hours. Selected route. Now we've got now we've got the SIDS. Okay, cool. Generated. Now show me the route. Yes, baby. Yes, baby. No directs. There's a direct there, but that's fine. Cool. Right. Fine. Hellish. Let's get to Gatwick. It's gonna be it's gonna be dark. It's gonna be dark. Let's get to Gatwick. Ah, uh, this is nothing but a science experiment at the moment. <laughs> but it's a learning curve, isn't it? You know, you have to you have to want to learn it in order to get to where you're going, which is to be able to fly the plane sort of proficiently. See, with the... Before I used to have the the Airbus, the fly-by-wire all the time. Fly-by-wire, that's the, that's the plane I used to fly the whole time. And then they brought out the Boeing, and it was pretty alien to me, and it, it seemed to be a bit more of a complicated plane, because the Airbus is... It does a lot for you. It's so computerized, it does a lot for you. And so... 
transitioning to the PMDG, but I did want to learn the Boeing, of course. And it was tricky, but then I, I, I applied myself and I, I got it and I sorted it and I became more used to flying that than the Airbus. Then the Phoenix one came out and I thought, oh, well, I can already fly the A320, so that's not a problem. But yeah, it is because the Phoenix is the level up. It's on the top shelf, right, of complexity and stuff. And you have to get everything right. Um, but I can fly the Phoenix. I mean, I did it the other day in a, in a stream, I think, and we did a nice smooth flight and everything was perfect, which is cool. It's, it's great to be able to do a full flight in a steady level. So it could be, it could turn out that I will eventually learn this plane to a point where I'm as proficient or more than maybe an Airbus. Who knows? All about practice and all that jive. Oh, okay, we need... So yeah, I mean, who knows? Let's see if we can do this in the dark. The plane should light up, though. Yeah. You have to enjoy tinkering with machines and equipment. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, if I was an engineer, maybe, or a, a an airplane mechanic. Oh, I would hate that job. The responsibility of an airplane mechanic. Jesus. You can't, you can't come down the ladder off a plane and think, did I tighten that nut? Did I put that wire back in? You know what I mean? Like, there's no, <laughs> there's no room for that. Oh, boy, no. Okay, we're good here. All right, so the nav will be on automatically, which is good, but it is. We've got the dome light set to right. What's the dim like? Is it really? There's no difference. Anyway. All right, guys, so the flight plan, I'm going to paste it in. Um, so you don't, I know you've got the old one on the screen right now, so we're going to paste in the new one. It'll just have to give me a couple of seconds to format this because, well, it's a bit long. It is a three and a half hour flight, this thing. There we go. Something like that. So, Gatwick to Madrid. Uh... We're ready to go. So, I will get down to my zoom. There. And then I'll just do a move to... There. Can I twist it? Perfect. Okay, is that right? Is that okay? Perfect. Okay, good. Right, let's see. Let's see if this works. Because if it doesn't, then it's back to the drawing board. Okay, GPS position copied into the scratch bar pad or scratch bar and up we go done uh, right return then we need to go to performance in it and cruise altitude is 21 do I need to put the alternate in really wonder what Madrid's alternate would be LEVC. Don't know that airport. I lived near Madrid for three years, but not really, not really know any other airports nearby. LEVC, and we're going to go for a made-up figure, eighteen thousand feet. Slightly lower. Okay. Now, in order to calculate the performance, I think it's going to have to have this in. So, I'm going to make it all up. Actually, I'm going to put it in here. Estimated zero fuel weight, 16,058. That'll do. Fuel on board. So, block fuel is 3,297. Let's call that 3,300. 
what's half of that? <laughs> 1,650, is it? Uh, on each side, it would be. So, let's just round it up. 3,300. Okay, so it needs to know the weight of itself. And... That's it. I think it just needs to know its weight. And then it can calculate its performance. Uh, right, reserve fuel. 362. Can't be a long taxiway then. <laughs> Don't worry, that's not just for the taxiing. That's for alternate airport as well. Right, so we got the weights in, so... Cool. The performance is going to be managed with this, right, I think. I'm still guessing at this stage, but anyway. So, flight plan. No, not the right page. In it. Flight plan initialization. Thank you. Okay, Gatwick, E, G, K, K, to Madrid, which I already knew was L-E-M-D, LEMD. I think the, what it, the way it boils down is, like, E is the region for, like, Europe, I think, and then G is, like, G for Great Britain, so Ger Germany would be E, D, and then France is... L instead of E for some reason and it gets L F so L E M D would be would be the Spain's L region it's L and then E for España and then M D for Madrid I would say <laughs> don't take my word for it I'm guessing um Right, I'll put that up here. I was looking for the enter key, but of course you don't, do you? Oh, no. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, I was just wondering why I hadn't put anything in here, but I think that's okay. All right, so. We are looking for runway 8R. And then we're looking for im... Imvu IZ. So the transition I think would be Imvu and the SID is Imvu 1Z. <laughs> yep, that's what it's going to be. Ooh. Transition. Okay, it's not listed. That's good. It'll probably put it in itself anyway. All right. All right, next page. All right, so the last thing is Inver, which is what it says on here. Right, it says, I'll get my mouse on it there, Inver. And then the next thing is N63. So let's go here. And we don't type Jack nothing in there. We just click. Ah, oh, yes. We click that. And then we click the blank to Sam. See, this works. Why the hell wasn't it working before? Trying to make out like I didn't know what I was doing. Right, from Sam, the next waypoint, it'll give us a list of them. Hopefully one of them is M195, and it is. And that goes to Maruk. Click in the blank select the correct one you see how easy it is this way you don't need to import the damn thing it's just easier this way this plane's brilliant for doing this it just gives you a list to choose from and you just pick the one that's on the next one on the sim brief route i mean flipping hell okay this is how i wanted to do it in the first place on the first flight now the next one says direct to novan interesting yeah. Now it's fallen over a little bit. Wait a minute. Go, 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 go back. Yeah. Now what do you do? Because if it's direct to Novan, I think it would be DCT here, and then Novan would be there. I don't know if you can do that. Oh, 
Let me, let me... Oh, it's not letting me execute anything. Oh, please don't freeze. It will... F the M M thing, this thing, computer, will freeze if you try and enter airways in there instead of letting it just do it. It doesn't like people doing that. And now it ha I think it has frozen. Son of a bitch. Another bug that they need to fix. Oh, Oscar, just exec and then put it in normal. Don't type DCT. Oh, you mean put it on the next entry of the flight plan? Okay. Yeah, but my sc it's, it's frozen now, this. Apparently, if you try and enter stuff in here manually, you know, by typing the letters, it, it, it freaks and it freezes. <sighs> is, is there a way out of this? Is there an easy way out? Like if I turn the battery off and then disconnect the GPU. Nope. Nope, can't do that either. <clears throat> How screwed am I now? Yep, the whole plane's frozen up. For flip's sake, for God's sake. Oh, I just did a flight, Oscar. I wish you'd seen it. It was... There was, we were flying on the route, and on the route, there was no top of climb shown, there was no top of descent being shown, nothing. And so, of course, the VNAV, it didn't descend at the place it was supposed to descend at. Absolute freaking nightmare. Let's try this again, then. I, I'm, I'm willing to try again. Where are we, by the way? Let's go back. Parking 117M. Jesus. Okay. Oh, what a nightmare. I want to try and get this entire route fed in properly. Because importing from Simbrief, ah, uh, I don't know. It... It is good. I mean, when it imports from Simbrief, it does actually fetch in quite a lot of data, To be from what I've seen anyway. It seems to fetch in a, a decent amount. It puts in... Yeah. It puts in a, a good amount of detail from the actual route itself, which is more than I've seen on the other planes, I think. I might be wrong, but it looks like it takes in a bit more. One way, what, and execute every one? Yeah, I think the problem was on that blank one, I did try and input letters into there, so I, I think that that's kind of the problem. But yeah, I'll do anything to just get this damn thing working. All right, so we'll get the battery on. And we'll just wait for the AVs to power up while the avionics are coming online. We'll get the GPU connected. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> I think what I'll do is just make my flight plan a little bit smaller. No, not bigger, smaller. Where's it going up to now? The Patreon sign? The end of the Patreon sign? Same same thing, but smaller. Come on, avionics. Thank you. Right, external power on. Beacon light off, because it shouldn't be on in the first place. And... Get rid of the yoke. And just look down at the floor, and position yourself. 
Okay. Again, we go through it. Position. And we want the GPS coordinates. And initialization. Boom. Wait, let's get it in from Simbrief, which is blah 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 blah. Blah 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 blah. Where's my routing? There it is. So, estimated zero fuel weight 16,058. I'm not going to argue over 58 kilos because it's a non flight. It's a dummy flight. Test, test. That's all it is. Test, test, test. 3,300 of fuel. Da 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 da. Gross fuel weight thing, and I think it was something along the lines of 385 for the reserve, whatever. That. Alright, so the weights are in. Cool, awesome, and brilliant. Back to menu, because that's the only way I know how to get there. To flight plan in it. In it. It's a flight plan in it. Right, so, uh, Gatwick. Two. Madrid. Madrid. Okay. And we wait. And execute and kill. Right, we are taking off from one runway eight right via Im it hasn't changed, it's still Imbus. Execute. Alright, nice. All good. Yes, baby. Very cool. Right, Inver Airway N63 is correct door. Two Sam. Execute. Now we can return. Actually, just click flight plan, it'd be easier. Now we can click Sam. He won't mind. Go on to airway. And after Sam, we've got M195. We should be okay entering multiples, really, but you know. And that leads over to Maruk. Okay, let's let's get the next line in because it should be fine, these two. And then I think Lelna is the next one. Okay, we'll execute that. So now the next one is the direct. So if I get to Lelna. So when am I putting I'm actually going to click on the discontinuity then, and then just enter the... Uh, which one am I going to click on? Which entry? The discontinuity it won't let me do. And if I click Elna... I mean... It's not going to let me do it, is it? So now we're... Where do I enter? The, or how do I enter the next waypoint? Is it here? Do I do it up here? No, there's nothing. Do I actually enter? And if I do enter it there, what am I entering? Type waypoint in the scratch pad. So am I entering no van? Is that the one I want? No van. It doesn't let you type behind this thing. No van. Okay. Do I put it here? Ah, now it gives me the two of them and you take the closest one. Alright, cool. So you do that with all direct, with all directs you do that, so we're going to do it again with D-Log. Right. Makes sense. So D-Log would go underneath Novan. And there's only one of them. So there was two Novans, and I think they appear in distance order, right? Closest first, so the top one would be the one that you pick. Uh, we had 
because we had two set two no bands. D log, there's only the one. So from D log, we can click into that now, and we should get UN eight sixty four. Okay. From UN eight sixty four, we're heading to non two. And I'm and I'm non too happy about this. Oh yeah, just a joke. Non too. Oh, what the flip was that? Just execute because I haven't got a clue what it just just did there. Non two. Okay. What? It's just entered 11 pages of bullshit. It's repeated. What the hell has it just done now? <laughs> <laughs> oh. And I also had an issue, Oscar, where in the altitudes, it wasn't filling in all the altitudes. There was so many blank ones and... Like, you know when you're... Cruising altitude is, say, 21,000. There was no 21,000 altitude in the list, and I think there should have been. I have no clue what it's just done, but it just went nuts and repeated that entry many, many times. What on earth have you just done now? So, it's been playing fine. So, we got it up to... Non two. I told you I was none too happy about this. And then D log was the next one. It's supposed to be the next one. No, there's D log. What? Am I reading it wrong? Oh, did I do it wrong? Did I put ah. No No, no, I didn't. No van D log. Ah, there we go. No van D log. UN eight six four. And then non two should have been under there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know that, Oscar. If, if it's a like ditto, I know it doesn't do that. But there was too many empty ones. Let's put it that way. This has gone really bad. After 864, it's just gone a little bit silly. Let's have a look in here. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So after the first D log on page three, for the next seven pages, it's just put in a load of crap. I swear to God. It just totally and utterly just glitched. Uh, D log. Actually, that non two can stay there. Let's just get rid of it. So many non twos here. Dun, 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 dun. Gonna take a little while to keep doing this. Need a macro. Yeah, they need... Yeah, there's a lot of things they need to do on this, such as allowing us to directly input fuel and weights and passengers on the EFB. The fact that you've got to use the Microsoft uh, weights and balances is just... It's horrible. Because the planes in kilos, Microsoft only wants to do pounds and gallons. Um, I don't know how many gallons a crew member is. But, uh, yeah. They're absolutely bizarre. Flight sim should have kilos. 
and also allow for more precise entries. You know, it's just not up to scratch there. But the fact that Microsoft doesn't allow for more precise entries and doesn't do kilos is even more of a reason for these planes to have EFBs. At least with the PMDG, it kind of you know, it kind of does the work for you. Some of some of the figures are kind of worked out for you. All right, so we've got D log, which leads on to UN eight sixty four, which is an airway, right? Then non two, right, which then should go to. Is that it? What about non 3C? Doesn't that have to get put in as well? Or should I have put non should I have put non 3C in instead of let's try it. I was gonna say put it in instead of non 2, but non not in the database. Did I type it incorrectly? I, I believe I did. I think I should delete this. Try it again. See, if, it's, if it screws up again, then I'm going to put it to bed. All right, so after D log, we want on to there. So, what about? Nont 3C in here. So we're going into 32 right, ILS, hopefully. Zulu, yep. And it should be here. Nont 3C. <sighs> Finally, the last. Of course, it's there. Brain fart. Of course, it's on the destination. Uh, okay, so we should now have a beautiful and perfect flight plan. Let me get to a better position here and also uh, blow the text away. Okay, cool. Right, let's step it and see what happens. Blah, 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 blah. Top of descent. Right there, where it should be. Top of descent. But look, look, I mean, okay. Well, I haven't looked at the altitudes, to be honest, so we'll, we'll check it out in a second. Oh, this is smooth, man. Look at that. Perfect flight plan. Oh! Right. Uh, just put this back to normal mode. No. Not that mode. Come on! These hot spots. They only work when they want. Right, so we're switching into altitude. Okay, good start. Yeah, now what? It's 4,000. What? And then suddenly we're descending again. See, this is what I mean. 
This is what I mean. It goes to four and stays there. And I've put the weights in and everything so that it's got no excuse for for not having its performance figures that it needs to calculate everything, right? Okay, except for one small detail. <sighs> Cruise altitude. Mean wind, it's going to be 246 at 10. I suppose if I tell the plane what the cruise altitude is, it would maybe help a little, you think? Uh, okay. But will it change this? Of course it won't. So why am I not getting... The climb, this bit, this is fine, this is easy. And then suddenly from 4,000, are you just expected to uh, feed your cruising altitude into the uh, altitude selector, switch on the autopilot and have it do it? Is that the idea? I mean, it would work because the plane knows where top of descent is. So, and it hasn't got a top of climb, right? Oh yeah, it does. Is that what that is? I, I, I wish I could zoom into it. So that is Maruk. I don't know if it'll show it on this screen. Oh, it does. Cool. Right, let's zoom in. And we'll let's step our way over to Maruk. Oops. Not doing it for some reason. Go back to flight plan. I'm in the wrong mode then. Or maybe it doesn't show it on this screen. Ah, oh, it is top of climb. I'm I'm thinking Boeing and Airbus mode. So you, you're climbing, okay? And then you put this into climb mode. You would set your altitude to 21,000. So it's armed here. And this is where it's estimating as long as... Is this what's this saying then? Like, if you do everything by the book, this is where we'll hit 21,000? Is that what it is? This is what I needed to see on my last flight and the top of descent. Oh, and it was just missing. And now, and now this has everything that it should have. We run through it, we get to top of descent here. Well, that can't be top of descent. What? And what does window mean? Did I go too fast on top of descent? <laughs> oh my god, what the hell? Top of... right. Okay, if we're cruising... Oh, okay, 15,000 or above, so it is possible. I was going to say, if we're cruising at 21,000, you can't have top of descent after 15,000, but it's 15 or above. So, okay, carry on. Okay, so yeah, it's 15 or above. So yeah, you can, it is possible. 12,000 or above there. But then top of descent, 21,000, you've got 20 nautical miles to get I see how it's doing it now. This is 22. 
Two, 220B, that's your speed, right? 220 or below. Or is it? What's 220B? Apart from where Sherlock Holmes lives. This is, it says 240 there. If that's altitude, 22,000 or below, that's so weird coming off the 12,000 or above. I mean, it'll still work, but it just looks bizarre. I don't know what window means. I'm gonna screenshot that. I've never seen that before. Everything is or above. When do we have an actual constraint? Nothing. I guess you left your own devices a lot here. But you've got to work out the descent on your own. <laughs> I think I would just put 5,000 in and let, let VNAV take care of the rest, right? I wouldn't want to fly for two and a half hours though, or three and a half hours, which is what this flight is, just to find out later on that the descent's not going to work or something's going to go badly wrong. Okay, so we got the flight plan fed in, that's good, I've learned a bit there. Thank you for that Oscar, appreciate that. And I, now I've seen that, I think I could have done it with the other flight plan, the original one that we did today. I'll be damned. Okay. Okay, I, I, I've learned. I, I've learned it. Yep, Every, everyone's a lesson. All right then, I'm gonna wrap it up. In, very interesting. I'll be back with this plane. I'll be back. I wasn't going to do it in the Schwarzenegger voice, but yeah. Yes, we will check that. We will definitely check out this plane again. Um, I'll do a couple of flights away from the uh, YouTube and um, every flight I'm going to do now is just going to be a learning process for, for a while. But I think, I think I can make some strides here. I, I've learned a lot from that failed flight. And you know what they say, you learn more from your failures than you do from your successes, right? So just because that, I mean, okay, we got the plane landed in, um, in Washington. We still landed the plane. But I, because it wasn't correct, it wasn't done with VNAV, there was no top of descent, the flight plan went wrong. I've, I've picked up a lot of information from that. And I guarantee if I was to do that flight again, it would be better. And it would probably even work. Yeah, trust me. <laughs> I've learned a lot now. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it a lot, as always, and appreciate your company. And... Uh, yeah, I am going to um, carry on with this plane. I, I like it. It's it's something different, right, than the Boeings and the Airbuses. It's propeller. And I've, I've downloaded some liveries uh, for it. Um, uh, there's a nice one from Air Baltic, which, which I've got installed. Really, it looks kind of nice. Um, but I wanted the Delta one for today because we were in the States. So kind of weird that this thing's sitting at Gatwick, but immersion breaking. 633 squadron on the uh, thing. Maybe not. Right. <laughs> I'll catch you next time, guys. Thank you so much for flying with me. Um, I got everybody down safely, so happy days. Till the next one. Adios. Thank <laughs> you.